हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू द डे थ्री ऑफ यूरोपियन क्लब कप 2022 दिस इज योर होस्ट सागर शाह एंड वॉम वेलकम टू एवरीवन इन द चैट वेरी सॉरी दैट आई एम अ बिट लेट टुडे टुडे इज द फेस्टिवल ऑफ द सेरा एंड आई हैड गॉन आउट विथ अमृता टुडे for a short time and uh, while coming back uh, we got delayed so i'm very sorry i just ran back um, and it was very very um, uh, sorry for that let's <laughs> morning star says dasera banaye gaye ho kya ah sorry uh, but guys आज का दिन बहुत ही बढ़िया वॉट अ डे टूडे इट इज विशी आनंद वॉज प्लेइंग हाउ एवर हीज मेड अ शॉर्ट ड्रॉ इनफैक्ट अ वेरी वेरी सॉलिड ड्रॉ विद द ब्लैक पीसेस विच इज एक्सेलेंट फॉर हिस्स टीम ए एस ई सुपर बेट एंड वी गोइंग टू लुक एट दिस गेम एज टू हाउ आनंद मैनेज टू होल्ड हिज ओन अगेंस्ट राउफ मामेडोव एंड ड्रू इट बट लेट्स गो टू द लाइव गेम विच इज बिटवीन गुकेश एंड अहमद जादा अहमद नाउ दिस is a very interesting position now if you look here the engine is off okay right now i also don't know what is the evaluation of this position how would you evaluate this position what would you evaluate it as can you tell me can you give me an evaluation guys give me an evaluation of this position is it 0.2 0.5 is black better try to put your brain around it and also justify that evaluation justify karo ki q let's see plus 1 minus 0.5 says morning star you think black is better okay interesting white is better plus 2.9.0 plus 1 pawn is hanging no uh, it was black to move rook c8 was the last move okay so white better now i'll tell you how to sort of assess this position in my thinking i will try to explain so one thing is that you have to first the major factor in this is pawn structure i feel pawn structure may if you see white has two islands here one island is this clump of pawns and one pawn here black on the other hand has three islands one two and three oops sorry three so already you can see that white is slightly better the lesser the islands the lesser the weaknesses okay so this is one way to look at it next is that the bishop i would say do you think bishop is slightly better or slightly worse in this position than the knight what do you think white has outside passer but where parth thakkar where is the outside passer slightly better i would say the bishop is slightly better as compared to the knight because it is putting pressure on it like as we have already discussed the tension is in white's favor because white is saying i will take it when i want it you know i can build up like i can bring my rook here and i will put pressure on c5 so that's how the bishop is putting pressure now one more thing that white can do is can put its bishop back here and look at this diagonal it is so amazing so the two main imbalances pawn structure and superior minor piece i would say pawn structure may 0.2 advantage superior minor piece may 0.2 so you will get 0.4 also i would say oh look at gukesh gukesh has heard us he is like i am keeping this bishop i don't want to exchange it and create see this was another way to trade one imbalance for another where you say i gave up my slightly superior minor piece to give you more pawn weaknesses so then i can go rook c1 queen c4 try to put pressure here but gukesh did not like that he said let me go bishop b2 and then my rook can swing over here and i see g7 as a very weak point in black scamp also if e5 guys you have to be alert for some tactical possibilities here after e5 i was just wondering if we can do you know because rook is hanging here something like queen g4 attacking here could be possible also f4 not to be underestimated 
So let's say my evaluation of this position is 0.6 better for white. ठीक है. If E5 Shiva says Queen G4, yes Shiva, I think that's a good idea. Also, I was just being a little too greedy with playing F4. I know it weakens the G3 point, but still, like for example, Queen G6, Bishop E5, Queen G3. Yeah, E5 played. Oh, E5 played on the board. E5 खेला गया है दोस्तों. Bar कहाँ है सरजन? Let's look at the bar. Oh, 1.0 is the advantage, not 0.6. All those who said one, very nice. And and now rook f four is what Hemant Dhonti is saying. Very good, Hemant. Also queen g four. Very good. Uh, this is Shiva's idea to go here and attack. Okay, guys, do you want to do this also for uh, Arjun's game? Shall we do that? Rishi says, can we look at f four? Rishi, I thought f four. Yes, exactly. The engine agrees with me. Queen g six attacking g three. Coming out of the pin, and then I'm threatening this, so we don't want to get into such a situation. Yeah, let's try to do that for. But Gukesh is better, clearly better, and good chances to win. Was well, a three out of three. Okay, what um, we will also do? I somehow on leeches. Hari and with its game is not available, guys. Do you know why? What is the reason for that? Okay, let's go to Arjun's game. Oh my God! Arjun is playing against Amin Taba Tabai. Boy, Taba Tabai, so pure Tabai machata hai. Very dangerous player. Queen D4 on the board by Arjun Eri Gaisi. Okay, okay, okay. One second. Let's let's analyze and give our evaluation. Firstly, problem, problem. Okay. Queen also hanging. Either piche rook also hanging. So he must take. I think he must take right because if he goes to d6, his rook is hanging. So he took took. Now, we'll start at oh Jewish holiday. We'll start at 10:30. Oh, oh, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Got it. Uh, Jai Pandit says during due to an existing decision of ECU. About Club Cup and Yom Kippur, in the rounds two and three for the Israeli teams and their opponents only will be played on different times. Got it? Thank you. That's so nice of you guys. मतलब chat है तो क्या ही? Guys, Hans Niman का भी video आप लोग ही बना दोगे मेरे channel पे सब information, seventy two page report of chess dot com. What does it say? Everything I can outsource to chat. <laughs> But here it's clear that white is better, guys. They go firstly extra pawn, secondly bishop pair. Yes, black has an outside passer, but it's not going anywhere. This is actually going in Arjun's favor, but the advantage. See, a pawn up, a healthy pawn up, a one point advantage there. Bishop pair. I would say let's add zero point three four. You know, of an advantage. So I would say plus one point five here. E E four is nice move, says Jancy. Yeah, exactly. Because if you take here, he wants to take this. So Arjun not even giving up his bishop pair, and also controlling the D two square. So plus one point seven. Abhinav says plus two. Kamal says plus two. 0.3 Hari Priya Babu, that's too less. I don't think 0.3. Come on, Ritu. What says? What about A2? But Ritu, after this, pawn can't go much further. I can go Rook B4, and I can put pressure on C4. So let's look at the evaluation after E4. Oh, only 0.6. Wow, wow, that is not 0.8 now. But I thought it must be way higher. Wow, I'm surprised at 0.7 evaluation. Exactly, and all of you are also right because you all are saying 1.7, 1.8, 1.5. Shiva says black seems to be quite solid, but how Shiva? Maybe the point is that if takes bishop takes, then this is a very solid structure. Shubham says e4 was inaccurate. Yeah, but. Okay, I mean engines would prefer doing this. I I know that. 
for a fact they don't really they are not worried about opposite colored bishops as much as humans are what engines will feel is that oh look this this structure is great and all of that but arjun says why should i give up my bishop pair i will go e4 and also you keep the option open no of taking here so a2 he wants to go rook b4 mm -hmm. okay by the way uh, Tabatabai goes f6. Ah, okay, f6. Okay, if if Arjun is sort of uh, wants to keep the bishop pair, he will either go bishop f4 or he will go here. But engines really want to get rid of this knight. And then if you play dc4, it wants to put his bishop back on e3 or c1. So let's say bishop e3 and uh, it says oh great position great bishop everything is good rook is well placed attacking here arjun is doing well d5 in the air but i feel that arjun because he did not take on the previous move may not take it he goes bishop c1 see this is sort of human psychology if you didn't take on previous move you won't take on the next move because chess for engines is like Every morning, let's say is a, if suppose every morning is a move, like every day is a move, then every morning is a new one for the engine. It assesses that position as if it's a fresh day. But for humans, we generally carry over something that is happening from the previous day. We are like, Are yaar, kal man, break up ho gaya. Oh no, yesterday my teacher was so upset on me. Yeah, oh, but yesterday this happened, that happened. So we carry forward things. And the same way when Arjun did not take on c4, he was clear about that I want the bishop pair. And that bishop pair he's still keeping in this position. He goes, by the way, bishop f6, bishop c1. And uh, <laughs> control saga. Are control kya? I'm mera to abhi break up, wake up ka time gaya, dosto. I'm uh, already fine. Uh, just talking about you guys. So now, now let, let's let's look at this position. Now the thing is, I take take and I take. This is a threat. A three pawn will fall. Badhya, maza jayega. Like I'll be pawn up. So what should we do? Can you do B C four and Rook B six? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> divorce all that is filal let's not talk all this a2 looks good says puja naughty yes a2 attacking this uh, let's go rook b4 attacking c4 maybe black goes bishop back what happened once again rook a4 was played acha rook a4 nihal game let's do nihal game the same way as we have seen but now arjun really has to uh, think seriously about taking this hey guys what is his idea if i take what is his point because if he takes here he's just lost a pawn take 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 pawn down now you are two pawns down so I believe his idea is to take here with the rook. And if you take here, he wants to take on d4. Or he may want to take on e4. Correct. Take here. Okay. Got it. So, so maybe it's no longer an easy position. Not at all. Actually, Amin Tabatabai has managed to uh, put a lot of pressure here. Okay, let's go to Nihal's game. Let's switch off the engine. Let's try to think on our own. Nihal's... Oh, bop, re. End game. Nihal Sarin playing... What's wrong with Nihal Sarin? He has 15 minutes on the clock. <laughs> What's happening? Okay. Simple. He's taken here. GF. F5. Takes, takes, takes. Nihal is thinking. I don't know what is he thinking. Why doesn't he just take the pawn? He took it. Okay. 
Now, Nihal has a passer. Does that mean that he has an advantage here? Or does it mean that black will go... Like, if black, if white can get BG5, takes, takes, I think white is better, right? No, he can go king d7, king e8. He can sit there on the e8 square. Because here he has an outside passer. Not easy. Yeah, king d5. Anyway, he was going to go king d5. So now, I don't see Nihal having an advantage, guys. Right, guys? What do you think? 0 0.5, 0 0.8. No, here I think it's more about... More about a very concrete evaluation. Is it winning? Is it a draw? Because we have reached that stage now where you can sort of say with confidence that one side is winning or it's a draw. It cannot be 0 0.5, 0 0.8. I feel such a position. Draw, right? That's what many of you think. It's a draw. I'm just thinking if Nihal can do like bishop at 6, bishop g7, bishop f6. And then uh, opponent takes, king takes. That could really help. And if the bishop moves somewhere or not there, there, then uh, e7. I think Nihal has this plan in hand. But the problem with that plan is that whenever you go here, I'll go king d6. And if you give a check, I'll come king d5. If you go back, I'll go king d6. And he also has his own idea of a6, b5, c4. Draw, guys. This is a draw, I feel. Let's look at the evaluation. It says better for Nihal, but I don't see why. Like... Generally, this will peter out into a draw. That's what is my feeling. What do you think? Yes, Maverick, if the e-pawn is not there, then very good chances to win for black. Because then black has a very centralized king, also an extra pawn here. Very good chances. Yeah, draw maybe should be the right way to look at this. Because uh, by the time he goes like this, we can always defend it with our king going back, our pawn also coming ahead. So Nihal, actually Nihal uh, in this tournament has already drawn one game. And today also looks likely that he will draw. Let's go back to Gukesh's game against Ahmad Zada because that was a very interesting moment. What happened is that after, uh, oh look, Gukesh provoked e5 and then went bishop a3. And he's like, abhi apun pressure dalega fir se. But rook came to c6 and now he took the open file, rook d1, queen e6. And guys, the time, time may, Gukesh has 7 minutes, 10 more moves to make and Ahmad Zada has 4 minutes, 53 seconds. Okay. Now, so, now Gukesh has to figure out another way to sort of make inroads into the position. I think one idea definitely that, that deserves attention is e4 followed by rook d5 i'm just trying to think e4 rook d5 what i will do is i'll put pressure on e5 e5 is a weak pawn that's what i want to do and i'm i'm a bit surprised like you know can, could gukesh have played it a little better here by going like bishop c5 you know because if you take with the rook, rook takes, pawn takes, queen b5, attacking here, check here. This already looks very dangerous. So maybe he has to take here with the pawn. And then we were discussing this. You know, one of the things in life and on the chessboard, very difficult to understand when to trade one advantage for another. For example, I'll tell you. Suppose I have a 10 rupee note, okay? This actually is an advantage to me, okay? A small advantage. On its own, this 10 rupee is not going to be beneficial to me, like, on its own. Like, I may say, what will I do? But if I trade it for the right thing at the right time, right time is important. So this bishop here is like a 10 rupee note. You have to trade it at the right time. You can give it there to the shopkeeper and say, can I get 10 uh, chocolates or one dairy milk or one uh, whatever, you know? 
then you made a good sort of a trade of imbalances. But if you keep it with you and you say, oh, 10 rupees, I want to keep it. What happens is 10 rupees value today is not the 10 rupee value next year because there is depreciation that happens, right? There is inflation. Sorry, not depreciation. Inflation that happens. And the 10 rupees starts to devalue and becomes 8 rupees. Sort of. Or maybe 9 rupees. So that's the reason why when Gukesh went bishop b2, his bishop was valuable but not on its own. It had to do something. It had to trade. But it came back. It provoked. It went back. Then it came here. Suddenly, already lower value. Okay. समझ गए समझ गए कमल शर्मा से समझ गए फिर अरे दोस्तों सीए का पढ़ाई नहीं है सीए इतना सिंपल रहता तो क्या ही क्वीन ई ओ ही प्लेज ई4 ही हैज प्लेड ई4 द मूव दैट वाज एंड आई वांट टू गो रुक डी5 आई विल पुट माय रुक ऑन डी5 दैट इज द पॉइंट ओके एच6 हम्म तो घुसते हैं भाई दोस्तों चलो मस्त स्क्वायर है नाइस स्क्वायर लेट्स गो इन Mandar Nanal says 94. Achha, Mandar Nanal, very interesting, very smart boy. Mandar says, Deko, agar main ye marunga, to ye. Free rook. And if I take here, you will take this. But what is the problem with Mandar's thinking, guys? Can you tell me in the chat? Let's see. How many of you are awake? Exactly, exactly. Are you bored? Come Exactly, guys. Rook e4, absolutely right. The rook can move. No, rook is a rook. Thodi na, see better. So, Hassan, Imran, Vinayak, Aryan, Kamal, Jai, Pritam, Beloklavi, Aradhya, Aryan, Rajeshwari. Well done. Rook e4 and peace down. So, and Gukesh, by the way, they go upon, we are able to guess all of Gukesh's ideas. 27, what is Gukesh's rating? 27, 30, ek minute, ek minute. let me just be sure, you know, like flex moment hai apna, abhi. What is Gukesh's ELO? 2700chess.com, by the way, great website. 2734.2, badia, okay, rugdi fi, now. Ahmed Zada Ahmed, what are you going to do now? Someone said, what if he reroutes his knight from d7 to f6? Good point, good point. And I believe he might do that. I believe he might do that. Knight d7 to f6. Rook ko bolega, chalo niklo yaha se. Tumhara kaam nahi hai idhar center mein. You can't sit here. But now, the bishop here says, guys, bishop, 10 rupee note, says that, look, Situation is changing. Suddenly, I can go back and with this rook here in this position, I can attack this. Amit Kumar says Sagar's ELO is below 2200 now. Amit Kumar, very possible. But how do you know? That is also a question. Why is Vidit not playing Prakyat? It's because uh, they are facing a Jewish team who has decided that, you know, the rules of the tournament decided that they have this Yom Kippur uh, festival that they will play 10 30, after 10.30. So, now, ooh, 97 happened and Gukesh has taken. Okay. No, it would be too much to say that the 10 rupee is a NPA, non-performing asset, who said Bishop is no longer a NPA, Shiva says. Yes, exactly. It is not an NPA. It is. It should perform well now. The question is how? Okay, let's say I take with the rook. I believe taking with the rook makes sense. I mean, queen takes. I just don't feel that the king is safe if the queen leaves it, you know. Just feel. Feel kar rahe apun. Also, like queen b5 looks strong, right? Let's say queen c6. I thought queen b5 makes a lot of sense. But maybe the engine is not so happy because take, take. I thought you are attacking here and here if the knight moves. But knight f6, rook e5, ah, rook c4. Okay, got it. 
got it. That's how you are create. If I play f3, ah, rook c3, rook c3. Attacking here and here. Got it. Okay. Kamal Sharma says bb2 followed by queen b2. So, so rook takes, he will take most likely. Ah, he takes with the rook. But yeah. Okay, now bishop b2 seems like a possible move because bishop says that yes my value on its own might not be too much but i can control the knight you know that that thing which happens where you on your own don't have too much value but the fact that you can control someone else gives you the value you might have not experienced it in your life yet but you will at some point so bishop b2 is an idea. Kimaya says queen a6. Chess base India, what if time period on compound interest is one year and internet interest is charged per year? Then it is. Are yar, ye kya Alok Raj, ye kya question hai? Chess channel pe interest, compound interest, simple interest. Aradhya Bansal says, Vese to me zero hu, but piche lag jata hu, to ten times ho jati hai value. Oh, nice. Nice. Okay. Now, guys, focus, focus. Thoda focus rakhte hai. Chess pe. Sim oh, queen b. Bam, arrow kar raha hu. And Bukesh plays this move. I was just making this arrow. And I was like, Bukesh will go queen b5. Because now the knight cannot move. Because of rook e5. He's played it. But, but, I'm a bit afraid here. I'm a bit afraid. I'll tell you why I'm afraid. I'm afraid because... Knight f6, just, just thinking out loud, okay. Rook e5. Ah, he goes king at 7 Smart move. I'll tell you why. Because my idea was knight f6, rook e5, queen h3. And you might say, Are, he's crazy. He's giving up a free rook. But I wanted to go knight g4, threatening a checkmate here. Threatening a checkmate. Now imagine that in this position, this position, the king is on h7. In this position. Okay, let's make a free move for white, something, you know, just, and this. This is the position. Achha, fir bhi winning nahi hai. Okay, got it. I thought it's a mate here, but actually the move that saves white here. Can anyone find white to play and win? What's the move? Let's see how many of you here are great defenders. I know there are many great attackers. Yes, absolutely right. Rook F5, Kimaya, Aryan Reja, Puja, Delight, Dev, Saksham, Abhinav, Mahish, Rishi, Prasanna. Well done. Rook F5. And the point is check. King here. There's no mate. When there's no mate, you give a check. My king comes out. I'm super safe. So, I don't believe that still... Ahmad Zada, Ahmad has any threat as such. He's gone king at 7. Because in the end, knight f6, rook e5, queen h3 takes knight g4, there is rook f5. So, but king h7 is a good move to play. Just bring your king out, no checks, wex. 2 minutes, 29 seconds for Gukesh. 7 more moves to go before time control. See the super chat. Array, super chat. Mayank Dubey. What does it mean plus 1 advantage? Let's say, if we have an engine with higher depth, can plus one advantage be checkmate in 50 moves with correct play? I understand that it's impossible to play like that, but just curious to know your views. Very good question, Mayank. Very good question. H5 played by Gukesh, fixing these pawns. Now, very interesting. You know, Gukesh makes moves which the engine may not like, but humans hate it. And that's why Gukesh is 2734. Because he finds the moves that are extremely difficult for humans to refute. Now, for example, engine is saying play a6. No, why? The point is that after queen a6, it wants to go knight f6 and all of a sudden e5 is not hanging with the queen here. Samja? So he is deflecting here. But with two minutes left, Gukesh knows that his opponent is not like a super GM like 2800. If it was Magnus, he would have played a6. But with 2488 Ahmad Zada, he might not do this A6 business. So that is where Rook C7 looks like a more likely move to me. 
what else can we think of uh, by the way that question in the super chat i'll come to it it's a very good question and we should talk about it after that oh my god he's played a6 but yeah what a move ahmed zada ahmed showing that he is actually a very good player very good player nice moves nice move there and now after taking ratnesh agarwal says don't underestimate any im or gm are dosto me being an im i know that it is not a good idea to underestimate ims but what to do there are times when they make mistakes and there are times when they make good moves for gukesh now it's a big question should he take on a6 allow knight f6 because then the game may go out of hand the queen coming to h3 the knight coming to g4 the rook moving in it can become quite dangerous for him on the other hand he has only 1 minute to decide other idea can be to go queen b2 keeping an eye on the e5 point so queen b2 knight f6 then you still can take this could be one way to go about it let's see what gukesh does because now he's down to 1 minute on the clock yes keep things simple says they make good moves but not all moves are best that is true that is the thing in life and on the chess board it's not only about how many individual good moves you can find but how many total good moves you can find which are like near the sort of the if if the best moves are plotted on a line how much of the how much is the standard deviation from the line determines how good a player you are you know so i think good players have a lower deviation what did he play queen d oh he played queen d3 but now dosto dosto i have a big big problem with what gukesh has just done he's come back but what about knight f6 ahmed zada plays it ahmed zada is asking gukesh hello gukesh what are you doing i am attacking your rook i am attacking your pawn you don't have an attack on e5 my queen can enter my knight is coming here my rook is well placed have you not given up your advantage the engines dislike gukesh's position now all of a sudden but but now o oh, king gukesh says queen h3 forget it because now if you take i will take here four king oh, but, oh my god there's also a check nahi 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 ye khela to e4 e4 did he miss it did he miss it what is the only move here for white guys after e4 ढूंढो यू विल देन अंडरस्टैंड इंटीग्रेशन वेरी वेल एनी सब्जेक्ट गाइज दैट यू फाइंड डिफिकल्ट इन योर लाइफ बीट चेस केमिस्ट्री फिजिक्स वॉट एवर इट इज ट्राई टू सी द रियल लाइफ एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इट like even those people who say like certain statistics is tough and all think about these uh, current cheating incidents that are going on everyone is using what they learnt in statistics in college and school to actually prove their point and when you learn statistics in this way it sticks in your head this is how you should be learning by the way d5 what is the move you all have suggested queen d4 is correct पूजा नॉडी देवाशीष उपाध्याय अभिनव गुप्ता प्रांशु दीपंकर शोभा अभिनव राजेश्वरी हसन आर्यन रेजा द मेन पॉइंट इज दैट इफ नाउ टेक योर टेक योर ब्लैक इज विनिंग इफ यू प्ले क्वीन डी टू बैड मूव क्वीन डी सेवन पिनिंग द पॉन बट इफ यू प्ले योर क्वीन टू डी फोर आई कांट पिन द पॉन बिकॉज यू गिव अ चेक योर एंड देन पिक अप द रूक दैट वॉज द स्मॉल पॉइंट कमिंग बैक टू द गेम नाउ आफ्टर नाइट ऑफ सिक्स किंग जी टू he played knight takes h5 mistake oh my god it's a mistake he should have played queen e8 which was a very tough move to find by the way but knight h5 bishop b2 gukesh is saying ahmed zada what about the e5 pawn 
And Ahmed Zada says, Rook C5. I'm going to take here. But guys, there is a great move here now. Come on. What should Gukesh play here? White to move. White to play. Ashish Gorpade says, Khanak, Paharia, Prisha, Margraj. Both my students are playing tomorrow state tournament. So Sagar Bhai, can you please say all the best for them? Khanak and Prisha, all the best to you. Play your best and hope that you are able to play good games tomorrow. That's the only aim. Play the best moves. Bishop e5 played. Guys, rook d6 mat khelo na. Q kar rahe ho rook d6 business. Queen g4 is coming. Why do you want, not want to win a free pawn? Who are the greedy ones here? Harsh Ranjan, I am Noob, Gabbar Singh, Anuj, Maverick, Bheru, Pramod, Mohammed, Prallad, Aryan Raja. Well done. Bishop takes e5 has been taken by Gukesh. 38 moves on the uh, move counter. Two more moves to make before time control. Okay. Because clearly he wants that after take, 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 take. This is what he wants. Oh, no, 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 no. Bhai, kya kar raha main? ED5, queen is hanging. Queen is hanging because of check. I thought he will take the bishop, but check. Hai. So, of course, he will take with the pawn. Okay. So, now, what does Ahmed Zada do? He's in trouble, yeah. Gukesh. Jayant Kumar says, Sagar bhai, mujhe bhi apna shishya bana lo. Are Jayant Kumar, there is no need to become anyone's shishya. Just be your own student. Just be curious. That is the most important thing. If you are curious, oh, what did he do? What? He took. He took. Queen g6. Kya kar raha hai? One second. What is he doing? He took. He took on d5. And Gukesh has taken. And queen. Oh, one second. One second. Ek, ek sawal hai mere man, man mein. Please clarify my duvidha. I am playing queen d4. Who is going to stop this pawn from queening? Just tell me. Okay, knight. Knight is going to stop because knight comes here. Mar diya jai. You can't take with the queen, by the way. Queen takes because I will take with the queen. Pawn takes d6, make a square. And the king is outside the square. The rule of the square pawn is queening. Game khatam. Finish. Khalas. Okay, if he takes with the pawn, I am pushing. No one is going to stop this. Okay, you can go here, d7 here. Check and queen e8, game over. So, uh, Gukesh plays it. Gukesh plays queen d4 for Gukesh. It's like, Pai, thank you so much. Free point here. Free point after queen d4, d6, d7, d8. And this is where you realize the difference between a super GM and a 2500 rated player. A super GM collapses way less often than a player who is rated around 24, 2500. This was just collapse. I mean, the, the level of resistance here just was not up to the mark. Like Bishop B2, Rook C5, he just blundered this with two minutes on the clock. I mean, look, you can go back here. You can bring your knight back. You can try and fight. But when you play this move, you are just... Okay, maybe he thought... Gukesh will take and this position is equal. I agree he, un he thought about this. But he played queen d4 and now who's going to stop this pawn? No one. This is queening. And so Gukesh is going to score another win here. 40 years, he's finished his 40th move. He'll get, get 30 minutes more. I think Ahmad Zada may even resign the game. The knight is out of the game. If it comes back, it gets taken. On the other hand, who, okay, if you go queen f5, d7, queen d6, d6, queen d7, I can take here and then this. The knight is completely dominated. You know why the knight is dominated. Can anyone tell me the rule why the knight is dominated here? Anyone? Path, path, path Pathak says, calm down, Sagar Bhai. Dosto. When I calm down, you guys say, Sagar Bhai, don't sleep. What are you doing? No energy. Maza nahi aa rahe. When Sagar Bhai has energy, you are like, Are Sagar Bhai, calm down. So jao, Sagar Bhai. Kya hi karne ka? Exactly. Bishop two squares away. The bishop 
is two squares away from the knight, completely dominating it. The knight has no squares to go to. And that's why Gukesh has a clear, clear advantage. Now, Queen E8 played by Ahmed Zada. Let's go. Aray, itta jaldi jam ne maarega. D6. Ek ek step. One step at a time. Meanwhile, meanwhile, very quickly, because Gukesh is going to win this clearly. And uh, Nihal Sarin, what is up with him? Yes, Nihal Sarin ki position me. Is there any way Nihal can swindle his opponent? I doubt. I doubt. Why? Because Anirudh says, but knight f6, not k. Anirudh, knight is n, n. k is for king. n f6 is defended by the pawn. I agree with you. But the problem is that the bishop will take it. And then the d pawn will queen. So that's the problem there. He had a move. He was winning two day, two moves back, uh, Rajdeep says. Oh my god, really? He was winning. Oh! Aray, baap, re, 40th move pe hi gadbad ho gaya. But how was he winning? Ek second, ek second. See, we saw this game here. Okay. And we actually, Nihal went for the same plan that we spoke about. We saw a6. Nihal played bishop f4. Nihal was like, king, don't come here. I'm controlling that square. Okay. Bogner said, fine, I am playing b5, I am creating my passer. Nihal went bishop e5. Bogner went c4. Maybe better move was king c6, but I, I doubt if anyone would play king c6. Why would you play king c6? Why is c4 worse than king c6? Like king c6, bishop f6, king d6 is coming, right? So anyway, when you are playing c4, bishop f6 played, king d6 also played. What's the problem? I don't understand. Takes, takes. And now, a4 played by Nihal, Bishop f, achha, he was putting him in zugzwang. Ki abhi move kya hai? Your king cannot move away, your bishop is hanging. So you have to, you can't even push the pawn, I'll take it. If you play a5, one more pawn will go on dark square. Okay, understand. Bishop f8 played here. Nihal now plays h3. Oh, smart. And now Bogner, why doesn't he keep moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? What is his problem? If he does bishop e7, bishop f8, bishop e7, bishop f8, how does Nihal win? I don't know, but he went bishop f6 and suddenly engine is like, Nihal, you are winning. But how? I'll tell you how. Guys, Nihal was on the 40th move here and he had to find a very, very important idea, I think. One second, let me think, how exactly is he winning? So, samaj me nahi does anyone understand how it's winning? Sack. They go. Bishop ko wapas lete. Let's take the bishop back. Okay. Now, I want to come here and here. Once my king reaches f7, I am winning. Why? Because I'll go bishop f6. I'll push the pawn. Agreed? Agreed. So, he must stop it. But how can he stop it? There is no way to stop it. If you put your bishop here, I'm coming, coming here. So you must put your king here. That is a must. Once you do that, I will go check. Okay. Check there. You go back king e8. Now, what should I do? Not so sure. Maybe this check is not good. What to do here? Yeah? How should we win this position? Again, put him in Zugzwang, but with Zugzwang, yaar. H4. Let's go H4. He can't move his king. His king is fixed. We want to go here. No, but bishop f6 check. Wapas aa jayega na yaan pe. He will come back. What is the progress you made? Okay, now let's say he goes bishop c1. H5. Let's say he goes back. What did you gain? Check king e8. Okay, fine. You got all of that. But what next? King f6. Okay. You made progress. Suppose he goes bishop c1. Idea bishop b2 and put here. Okay. You come back. Now he can't do that. Now your king is better placed. Suppose he waits. Stops king g7. How is it winning?
should we go e7 e7 king e6 move the king this way or can can we go king here 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 would that win king e5 anant nayak i would have loved to play but this check me ye bishop mar raha hai let's say king f5 king e7 bishop f6 check king e8 king e4 hmm then you will go here and take this acha it's actually not so difficult yeah to win king d4 o c3 nahi one second king d4 here take this pawn king here and king d3 got it and next move i'll take this oh but you take 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 king e7 king f but why is the same variation not working when the pawn is on h2 like here when my pawn is here let's say i do the same plan with my pawn here i pushed it here no so let's say i go here here okay check king e8 king uh, king f6 what is the problem here i think i think in many of the lines having the pawn on h5 is a huge advantage so let's say if he goes bishop f8 here and if my pawn was on h5 so if i go to this line where i have put it on h5 bishop at 6 bishop b4 king here king f6 bishop f8 then in this similar position with this pawn bishop c3 i am i have a feeling that this pawn is playing a role somewhere guys kahi na kahi to ye pawn एक रोल प्ले कर रहा है किंग ई सेवन ख्योर किंग एफ सिक्स बिशप एफ एट बिशप सी थ्री बिशप डी सिक्स एंड इन दिस पोजिशन वॉट आई एम डूइंग इज आई एम गोइंग बैक टू दैट पोजिशन ऑल द टाइम एंड ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट इफ वॉट इज द डिफरेंस विथ पॉन हियर एंड हियर बिशप हियर I think it's just a matter that it's just it's just better positionally placed. That seems like the only reason. I mean, at some point you might get this pawn or this idea. It's a complicated. I I wouldn't I wouldn't be too hard on Nihal for missing this entire thing because the idea was to put your king here and after king f six to find h four h five push the king away. then somehow maneuver yourself put the bishop here bring the king back and win this pawn but actually nihal the fact that he pushed the pawn to e7 means that he can no longer win this why can he not just go back, go after the pawn again bd2 king d4 c3 king d3 and now nihal might want to take 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 king e7 king b4 king b4 king d6 king a5 king c6 king a6 h5 oh my god there is this beautiful uh, one second one second it's called bars rule okay guys please google it bars rule b a h r bars rule what does bars rule say i'll tell you theek hai i read it long time ago let me be accurate bars rule says that let's imagine king e8 okay uh, i improve my position of the pawn now very important okay i'm telling you this is very important move for black here what will you play here in case of just as your general knowledge not even calculation what is the move black should play here p chandra shekhar says bars rule is a neat rule that can be used quickly help an attacker with a blocked rook pawn and an outside pawn exactly exactly so that is where the bars rule is going to come b a h r not b a r dosto yes beautiful chat your general knowledge is excellent all those people jay pandit saksham call arnav pawar abhishek gupta sumanish arnab aryan harsh suniti maverick gg h5 
Now, why you have done this? I'll tell you that suppose I take, 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 take. Now, what does bar rule say? That when I go here uh, and let's say here, here, here and here, it says that these two pawns being here means zero. Okay. And, and there is this line which you must create. And if the pawn has moved ahead of that line, I don't know which line to create from where. This is a draw. This is a draw. King C. But it, it's a draw because of Sorry guys, I should know these things, but as someone rightly pointed out that I need to play a little bit more, otherwise I have 2200. Uh, although endgame rules, many people forget when they don't, uh, when they don't revise it. You know, revision is very important. Stenitz rule is here, bar rule, bar rule, bar rule, kya hai bhai, jaldi, jaldi, jaldi. This is Dwaretsky's Endgame Manual. It is one of the very interesting books. If you want to become good at theoretical endgames, you will know everything. Just like how I know everything, but I forget. So you have to revise it all the time uh, in order to re recollect it. Yes, got it. Ha. Huh. Okay, bar's rule here. It's not two rook pawns, but the bar rule say, First rule, if the rook pawn of the stronger side has crossed the middle of the board, it's always a win. So, so just imagine, just imagine the importance of the move h5. Imagine that you did not play h5 here and you played this and I could play this and then you take here, here, here here uh let me let me yeah here here let's let's even play h6 no why to clicking e8 h6 Just, so now take 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 king b4 same position guys this is winning for white this is winning the reason is that after king c5 a5 king c6 king a7 king c7 a6 King c8, king b6, king b8. Now, king c6, your king is going way faster. Tuck, 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 tuck. Oh! And white wins. White can... Oh, by the way, I need to make this full screen. What am I doing? Huh. So, I can push the pawn to queen. So... That's the reason why black had to play his pawn to h5. Now, what happens in the same rule, same position, is that after take, 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 come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, 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 here. Either jange, 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 either jange. And, and black is just in time to draw the game. And sorry, I played a7, which I didn't have to. I can just go king c6 here and, you know, I could have saved that tempo. But even still, even still, as you can see, take here, here and draw. You need to come here. You remember if it's a rook pawn, if the black king can reach these two squares, it's a draw. So that's the reason why, that's the reason why white is drawing here while, so bar's rule is very important. First point is that if, 
in case white has an extra pawn and there are two rooks pawn facing each other. Remember very clearly guys, this is an important thing. You might learn this and remember for the rest of your life if you just keep it in your head. If two players have rook pawns, jo ek dusre ke saamne hai, they are facing each other. If the side with an extra outside pawn has his pawn which is moved ahead of the middle of the board here it wins so in this case in any any position where the pawn is on h5 and h6 it is a winning advantage so here if white could have played this it would have meant a lot to him okay now coming back when the pawns are equally locked like in this case that black also is careful and plays h5 then when does white have winning chances we shall designate this as normal position in which rook pawns which block one another are separated by the middle of the board so this is a normal position here black's king is aiming for the c8 square and can reach it without loss of time because so c8 means here f8 black king is aiming for f8 square here and can reach it without loss of time this is because the past pawn has either traversed the key diagonal h3 so ah, okay 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 yada gaya, yada gaya. so are kidar gaya position h4 h5 bishop c3 bishop c3 here this position now coming here you need to make a diagonal like this okay if the pawn has gone because the king needs to reach here right in order to draw at the end jab ye pawn guys listen to it carefully when the white king goes and takes this pawn where does the black king need to be on f8 remember this so when it needs to be on f8, draw a diagonal like this. Now, if the outside passer has gone ahead of this diagonal, it's always a draw. Okay. For the king side passed pawn, every square that it is behind this diagonal is an extra tempo for white. For example, so here, if the pawn was back here on a2, white would have won. This very position, white would have won. Because it is behind this. White wins only if the relative number of tempi calculated by the means above are shown in his favor. So, now in this particular case, even if the pawn... Ha, if the king is ahead of the pawn, that is one tempo. And the pawn, so let's say even if the pawn was here, this, okay. Guys, seekna hai ye ki baad mein. Seekna hai ki baad mein. Live position dekhna hai. Let's just quickly see the live position. C3 pe pawn hai. Do you, uh, are you all keen to learn or we can learn this? I can make a separate video on this later. If you want to learn now, E4. If you want to learn later, D4. E4, D4. Now, E4, later, D4. It will take two minutes only this time. ठीक है e4 d4 दोनों काफी क्लोज है 100 पीपल वांट टू लर्न 77 डोंट वांट टू लर्न ओके ओके ठीक है दोस्तों ठीक है ठीक है आई विल आई विल टीच इट वेरी क्विकली बी मर गया यहां पे दिस इज अ बिशप एंड गेम सो माय लास्ट पॉइंट हियर एंड आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टेक मोर ऑफ योर टाइम बिकॉज़ आई नो यू गाइस are very interested to know what's happening in the games is that after this let's say this 
take 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 when this position is reached and then i go here and i win this pawn now there is an important diagonal to be made remember this pawns here our important normal position if white has a pawn ahead and black pawn is here it's always winning for white always come what may kahi pe bhi pawn hai it's always winning unless there is like the king is blocked on the side and that position like either don't know this is this is winning okay when the pawn is ahead now they are locked so this is the normal diagonal now if the pawn is on the diagonal it means both sides have zero tempo here there is zero tempo and because the pawn is on a3 it would have zero if the pawn is ahead it means black has an extra tempo but the white king is ahead of the pawn so white has an extra tempo so black has an extra tempo because the pawn is one square ahead of this diagonal and white has a tempo because the it, its king is ahead of the pawn so 1 minus 1 0 it's a draw now imagine in this position the pawn was back here then white is winning this position why because his king is ahead of the pawn it's already one tempo extra and the pawn is on the line so it's zero there right so white is winning anything that is in white's favor if the pawn is on a2 it means white has one extra tempo because it is one square behind the line and then if the king is even behind the pawn that is fine white wins nonetheless okay so that tempo 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 exactly that the one move tempo is based on this magical line all you have to remember is that the king needs to get here and we need to draw a line there and any pawn let's say if the pawn was on b3 or c2 or c3 or c4 you can draw this line and if it is behind that line you can count the number of tempos okay here pawn is on c4 it is one tempo in white's favor and if black king white king is behind it it's still okay white wins okay let's go and let's go to arjun's game i hope you understood it if you did not understand maybe at some point i'll try to make a video on this meanwhile arjun erigaisi whoa shiva says sagar bhai just repeat the whole thing from the beginning <laughs> Jai Pandit, I can demonstrate it with a pawn on A2 and A3. I'll do that. Yes, Jain says, love your commentary on Vishy games. Please start your stream on time. You know, yes. Until now, Vishy having black in two games, he played very sort of solid openings. And I don't even see that there was too much to talk about. Although I'll talk a bit about Vishy's game. I have not yet seen it, but looked like a very solid draw. So I'm actually waiting for Vishy to have white pieces. I hope he gets in the next game. Actually, we left off this game somewhere around here when he went rook a4. And Arjun now took... Rook takes and oh my god, Arjun did find the next move. I was expecting Arjun not to play this. Guys, can you find it? White to play. Oh, Travel with Nikhil Roshan has sent a super chat here. Thank you so much, Travel with Nikhil Roshan. He has said... One minute, kidar hai? Guys, aap logo ne itne sare moves bata hai. Hmm. Hi guys, can we hit the like button to make it 1k likes? Guys, please like here. Parmaish karte ho hum se kuch kehne ki. Hum shabdo ke fasle kaha te kar paate hai. Kya karoge sunkar kuch meri baato ko. Asli jazbaat hum kaha baya kar paate hai. Wow, 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 wow. Travel with Nikhil Roshan. Thank you for your super chat. So, yes, that is correct. E5, Richit, Pratham, Jai, Ajay, Himanshu, Amrit, Pranay, Gattu, Radha, Vidya. 
well done all of you that was correct by the way on this board i'm going to uh, set that position up for all those who are keen on uh, that ye ye a3 and the same position okay this is what we were talking about now when you draw this line it becomes like the pawn is on this line so zero tempos but the white king is ahead of the pawn so plus one so now if we just uh, check the engine I'm, I'm just trying to see if this is the uh, correct uh, king c5 king a5 king c4 king a4 ah so with the rook pawn it may not work with the rook pawn because the king being ahead it's not helpful it has to go behind and now suddenly the king is not ahead ah but if my pawn was on a2 then i would be winning one second yes this is winning this is winning so i needed to pawn with a3 it gives a false sort of idea that my king is ahead of this pawn but actually with the rook pawn it does not work when the king is on the side but imagine if the king just just to give you this point if you go king uh, c5 king here king c6 this is lost this is lost because after king b4 king b6 now my king is ahead so now this is lost but because here he was blocking me now imagine that in this position the pawn is here like this this is winning because on this line the pawn is on the line while the king is ahead but if i use this position with king here and here this is a draw because now pawn is on this line so zero and king is not ahead of the pawn so king c6 king d4 king b5 king here takes here 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 are bhago 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 poch gaye okay so that's why that's what bars rule okay anyway com coming back to the game i hope uh, i will i think i need to explain it in a more detailed manner but i hope you get this small uh, bit of thing and now now e5 was the move that arjun played rook takes d4 rook a3 f e5 arjun played bishop b2 rook a4 takes on e5 king f7 rook d3 rook a2 rook b6 king e6 f4 oh he had to go d4 here that would have been such a nice move but i think arjun had prepared rook g3 for it sorry f4 g5 rook c3 gf bishop f4 king d7 rook g3 rook e2 rook a6 okay this is going to be a very touch and go situation between arjun winning and a draw i think it's going to be a very very close call Sir Faraz Rubli, I will do it. King e six. Okay. I'll make. I'll make. Uh, I'll make that thing. Okay. someone asked in the super chat the question that look it's saying 1.1 advantage at this point okay and the depth right now is 25 it's showing here stockfish is showing 25 depth does it mean that if you increase the depth what does this plus 1 mean actually like you know right now this engine can only look at 25 plies ahead 25 plies plies is half a move so it means 
12 and a half moves. But imagine that you have a supercomputer which can actually look at 200 plies ahead, like SSA that you have. What does this 1.1 advantage at this point mean? Does it mean that white will actually win the game? Like it's plus 10? Or is it 0, 0.00? Because eventually, if you are able to look at a position till the end, the end of the game, then the game would be drawn, won or lost. These are the results possible. And so it's a very interesting question here. And I believe that every position will have a different kind of a end thing that will happen. In such a position, 1 point plus 1, I think, would most likely convert into a draw. Because the amount of drawish tendencies here seem to be quite high, according to me. I, that's what my understanding is, but maybe I would, I would be wrong. Uh, but it is quite possible that some positions which show plus 1 in the middle game, which are super complex, could go to a win because on maybe 34th move, there is a small subtlety which a very strong engine might see and a normal engine may not. Tanmay says, Stockfish will defeat itself in this position. No, since it's plus one. I don't think. I don't think. Rev says, do you think it's a bit unfair for Gukesh to play on board 4? If he draws, he gets minus 4. If he wins, he gets plus 1 or 2. But, you know, Rev also is playing against opponents who are 300 ELO rated uh, below than him. And he's playing phenomenally. Also, when Gukesh has white or black, that makes a huge difference. At least right now, he's 3 out of 3. And I think from next round onwards, the real top teams will clash each other. That is when we will get to see. Suniti Gupta, this rule of square which I told in Gukesh's game is actually very, uh, uh, very normal. Uh, I think uh, this you can just search. It, it just means that if you remove all the pieces uh, in this position, uh, then let's say I remove this rook, rook, everything. Then whether this pawn will queen or not or whether this pawn will queen or not and the black king can stop or not has to be de determined by drawing this square here and if the black king is within this square it can stop so imagine that the black king is on a7 and it goes to b7 it is outside the square so h4 will the pawn will queen that is the rule of square that i was showing in gukesh's game uh, Jai Hanuman says charvischess.com username. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what it is. Shashank says Sagar, what are the odds we'll get to see Magnus versus Anand? I think Opferspiel, what is it doing right now? If you look at the standings ranking list, Opferspiel is 2 out of 2. So is Anand's team. And in today's round, uh, today Magnus has taken a break. The team is playing against Shark, Gelshaft, Ryan. If if today their team wins, I think they will have because Superbet is a strong team. They will win all their games. I think Magnus's team will have to keep up. Only then Vishy versus Magnus will happen. If that happens, it will be epic. Actually, to tell you the truth, after Vishy played with Magnus in 2019 uh, at Tata Steel Chess India. Uh, that was part of the Grand Chess Tour. I thought that they will never play again uh, against each other. But Vishy is unbelievable. You know, he's just going on and on. He's playing, playing, playing. And we might get to see him again. Bhushan Kashish says, Can beginners start watching these live videos to learn chess or this is advanced? Well, if you know a bit of chess, then generally you might learn a few things from this. It also depends on the game that is going on. Some games, I can explain it really as a beginner. Some are very advanced. Like right now, it seems like already this position is quite complicated. Uh, Keegan Lobo says, why aren't you addressing and having a stream on the Han situation? I think... I will do a video on Han's situation after I read those 72 pages of Chesscom that they have released. 
uh, and also from today guys hans niemann is actually playing at the us championship which is actually a big big news Ah, in Norway, Chess, he almost defeated him. Yes, Tanmay. That was in 2021. Exactly. What am I thinking? What is the winning move for Arjun, says Chandra Shikhar. I don't see it as a winning move as such. But I think he has to play on. Yeah, like a lot of moves. Say, for example, if you go check. What should black do here is a question. Because if you go king uh, here, there is rook d6 check. And then you lose this. So king f5. I think Arjun might be assessing this endgame. Not so easy to assess this. But I think black has enough play here. Because this d pawn is super fast. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Today we released a video with Suhani Shah, which was very cool. If you want to learn uh, about D4 openings, just very, very basic things, you can go and check it up. It will be very useful for you. Okay. Let's look at Nihal's position. Has there been any change made here? Ah, Nihal has reached this end game. And somehow his king cannot escape. Huh? Bishop controls this. How do I make progress? I don't see a way. I don't see it. There's no way. This is this king is blocked, guys. This king is totally blocked in, and there is no way in which this king can come out of it. This pawn is going nowhere. It is a draw. Yeah, this is a draw. Actually, yesterday Magnus's game was so nice. Yeah, so nice. I was I was expecting Magnus to play today as well. He played so well. Let's quickly check Vishy Anand's game, right? Now that we have some time. E4. So, Rauf Mamedov, very aggressive player. Vishy says, well, let's play E5. You know, Anand is more like of this mindset now that you must play normal solid chess, you know. Let's not experiment with, with what's already established in chess. Takes Bishop C4. Okay, Knight F6. Oh, he was Bishop C5. Knight g5. Okay. Very interesting. Oh, very interesting. Do you know, guys, when in which game this opening was played? Which game, which famous game was this opening played? Priyank Bhatt says audio quality is not good of that video. I'll tell you what happened is. I was using this um, mic, which has very good road mic, but because I put it on my t-shirt in a way that it was rubbing against the cloth of the t-shirt and that made so much noise that my mic quality was horrible and I had to use the audio of another phone that was recording from a distance. So that's why in that Suhani video, um, I couldn't couldn't uh, have a good sound. Yes, and uh, Vidit versus Magnus. He plays knight g5, offers a draw. So now we can know what would have happened. f7 is hanging, so knight at 6. And he takes. And you were like, what? What just happened? Has he just sacrificed a piece without compensation? Guys, what does, it, what does white do here? Come on, tell me. What does white do? By the way, guys, today I have done something unbelievable. Can I, can I uh, show you what is that really cool idea that I, cool thing I've done? Yes, very good. Great job by all of you. Queen h5 check attacks the king and the bishop here puts the king in check. 
uh, and the thing is Rachit Shaibi, Rutwik, Prashant, Sarfaraz, Delight, Ishu, Atharva, Glossy Dragon, Waffle Rant Gaming. Well done. Amir versus, versus Vishi. Amir versus Vishi charity stream also at this opening, huh? Ah. Maybe, huh? Maybe. But slightly different. I'll, I think what was different was not d4 wasn't played there. Bishop c4, bishop c5. Knight. Ah, in there, I, I remember. It was knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5. That This was the line. So, what did I achieve today? So, the thing that I achieved today, and you guys can be uh, slightly proud of me, although I have not yet figured it out totally, but I want to just share it with you anyway. Is this. And I don't know uh, when I will use it, but how do I do it? Yeah, here. Droid. Look at this. This video, now I have, I can use it. It's a very good quality one without any lag or anything. And I managed to make it work. And uh, yeah, I hope to use it soon. Anyway, uh, it was some bit of research, but could finally. Droid cam, droid cam, yes. Droid cam for OBS. That is the uh, name of this app. Are angle way to set karna hai na, dosto? Abhi ta quality. So check G6, Queen C5, D5. Oh, nice move by Vishi. Vishi knows his stuff. ED, if you play ED, I believe Vishy would go rookie 8 check, yeah? This is already very good. This king is in the center, if you go king f1. Um, oh, nice move. Guys, try, try to think, what does black play here? It's a cool move, cool move. Let's see how many of you. India number one, Gukesh incoming after this tournament. Possible, huh? Possible, because Vishy... He's uh, losing some points because of his draws. While uh, So Gukesh has reached an ELO of now 2736. While Anand is 2751. But there's still a 15 point gap. So it's a too much gap, I think. 15 points in 4 rounds might not be easy. My god, what's up with you guys? Amazing, amazing, amazing. B6. By Mithun, Ramalingam, Hariyom, Hardik, Arnav, Jochnav, Gattu, Parth, Samarth, Sarfaraj, Amritraj. Well done. B6. What a move. Amazing. You're giving up this knight. And now, boom, check. C4. And now for everyone in the chat, who can answer this? P. Chandrasekhar says, I use my old smartphone with droid cam as my webcam. It's very good. Yes, that's what I did. You know, today I was very up. I was like, how is it that I'm streaming since two years and my camera quality is just the most horrible? People stream for like one month and they figure this out. I can't figure this out. So I must buy something new. Okay, then I have all these huge cameras here, which I cannot make it work because of the lag and all that stuff. And so, then I found this and I'm like, okay, good. Let's see if I can make it work. Now my, now my challenge is where to put it so that it's a good angle. 
it should not block the screen and all of it ah. dc3 yes dc3 mithun kritika kamal amrit clara ram prasad parth jochnau atmaram tamid take on c3 this is known as opaso all those who don't know opaso please go to chess ranga and check it out you will learn this is made so that's the reason why d5 very classy move vishy anand knows his stuff d5 played castles d takes e4 c3 rook e8 okay take on d4 queen takes queen g5 i need to keep the queen on queen f6 queen g3 attacking this pawn and now anand goes knight d4 knight c3 stopping knight e2 check c6 bishop g5 queen e5 rook a d1 okay i'm actually nice position here for oh he takes here maybe he should have kept the queens on with queen h3 he took rook takes rook f e1 h6 bishop f4 rook e8 knight e4 g5 okay this was maybe not the best he could have kept the bishop on bishop c2 bishop c7 he played this and now this is a draw okay but a very interesting opening decision by uh, ralph mamedo i think he put vishy under some pressure for sure i think the most accurate move here after c3 is to play queen d6 offering a queen trade but uh, vishy went for rook e8 and then cd4 and now already he is in some bit of trouble here because the king is slightly exposed knight is coming out bishop is coming out rooks are joining in so yeah good good opening guys you should you should uh, take a little bit of um inspiration from players like rauf mamedo who play slightly unusual openings but not terribly bad or lost openings they play tricky lines and this is a good way to sometimes play against opponents like anand against whom if you play like real main lines uh, like let's say bishop c4 bishop c5 their knowledge and the amount of work they have put in is so much that in order to level the um, the knowledge gap you are trying to play openings where anand has not spent so much time and has only a vague idea of it but the downside of it is that the position itself is so sort of uh not so rich that you won't be able to outplay a player like vishy who is anyway a very good player so that's the problem okay uh vidit and i think uh, hari krishna will start in some time say 10:30 is what was told so i think they must be now in 15 minutes they will begin meanwhile i think nihal sarin has just drawn his game and nihal uh, i need to actually check that end game of how nihal was winning there was a chance that nihal could have won and by the way nihal himself got still <laughs> still made in the corner nihal using his uh, sort of Uh, maybe slight humor to uh, you know get himself stalemated meanwhile arjun is winning arjun has a winning move oof ek second kya hua kya dekho we were looking okay arjun found bishop e3 best move king e5 h4 d4 good move bishop f2 and now he had to go king f4 but he went rook d2 check king e6 he had to play king f6 okay king e6 now how is this winning let me see okay i go rook g6 check rook g6 now the king has to move backwards but where f7 What's the problem? Like king f seven, rook f five check, huh? Rook f five, king e seven, rook c five. No, rook king e seven. 
what's happening check king f oh he found it by the way rook g6 and now what ah you can't go this because this is hanging what am i saying but why is this winning h5 14 minutes for arjun to figure out d7 ramit says to stay connected with the bishop but ramit after king d7 there is check and if you play rook c7 there is check here so you need to go back but then i go check and you are mated and if you go king here then i mean this is already gone no check king e8 rook h6 threatening mate king d8 and already h5 pawn is queening okay king f7 i'm sure arjun will play h5 I think the main problem is that rook f5 combined with this h pawn and two rooks and the king under pressure and the weak bishop, all of this together is creating the situation which is lost for. Chirag says uh, h5 is tough. No, 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 h5 is not tough. Arjun will find it. He's thinking here. He has also 13 minutes to find it. Arjun finds h5. Rukesh 1 Ajaya. You know, when Amin Tabatabai plays against these Indian youngsters, I mean, he's also a very young guy. He's, if I think he's 2003 born. He's also 2003 born or 2004 maybe. Oh, sorry, uh, two. Amin Tabatabai is 2001 born. So he's 21 or 20, 21 years old. And he's so competitive. He's so, uh, you know, he wants to beat always his opponents. And when he is losing to any of these youngsters, he feels very strongly about it. Bishop e4, rook a7, good move. Arjun finds it. I think Arjun has seen it all. Arjun now will play this check. Come on. This he's going to find. Rook f6 check. This bishop is attacking. You go rook f6 check. If king e8, rook e6 check. And you lose the bishop. But it doesn't end there. Because there is check, but yeah, you can play rook e1 and then you're winning, right? So he has to play after rook f6, king g8. Oh, Anish versus Duda right now. What? Really? Anish is playing Duda. Where? Oh my god, I didn't know about it. Kya dosto? Me kuch pataya tak nahi. Global Chess Championship. No, Anish versus Pankratov. Kya yaar, dosto, miss ho gaya. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's check. Hey, aaj to lambi raat hai. Anish Giri facing a Pavel Pankratov. Okay, let's finish this game. Yeah, true. Let's finish this game. I think uh, Arjun will win this. And now King check, King G8. Okay, H6, let's go. Let's push, then check. Are Ashpunkrato. Aditya Bhopale, the format of this tournament is team tournament with six boards in each team. And we have two Indians in three teams, three different teams. So with the, uh, 
Anand and Gukesh are in Superbet. That is a Romanian team, Romanian club team. Vidit and uh, Hari are in a Czech team called Novi Bor. And uh, Gukesh, uh, Arjun and uh, Nihal are in a Slovenian team called Typhoon. And they are all playing there. And the European Club Cup is a seven-round Swiss team tournament with 80 some 80 odd teams or something 60 to 80 and uh, the one who scores most number of points will win I will uh, I will create something very I'm just trying to uh, give me a second guys just trying to fix certain things uh, what is the stream deck yeah give me something here and okay so H6 played by this and now what is the threat? Let's say if I make a wait, waiting move, let's, what waiting move to make? Let's say you go Rook B8, check, King here, and then just Rook D6 with the idea of BD4 and Khatam. You go, ah, you go check, King here, and you play Rook F2, Rook D8 is a mate. Roshan Rangaraj says it's interesting to note that after d3 the winning move is rook here hmm. with the idea of bishop d4 yeah also Roshan maybe just rook g7 king here rook d7 also seems to be doing the trick yeah with bd4 in the air just about getting bd4 without or maybe can we go bd maybe it's too soon yeah to play bd4 here but also good enough just putting the bishop here because this is defended the king is getting checkmated by these four pieces basically amin had hans as his second for fide grand prix really update results okay i'll update Is Arjun might well win this today. He's, he's still thinking here. What did he play? H6. He's played H6, no? Ah, he's got time. Jara. Correct. Um, Okay, got it. Now, he's still thinking what he played. He played d3. Okay, cool. Let's see what Gukesh comes up with now. 
सॉरी अर्जुन I'm going to be a pro streamer okay guys in uh, approximately few minutes let's see how how much of a pro streamer i can be what what happened how did everything change are yaar chakkar chakkar ke ओके ओके ठीक है ठीक है बैक बैक अरे वे आफ्टर डी थ्री अर्जुन इज स्टिल थिंकिंग इज नॉट मेड इज मूव हाँ विदित गेम हैज बिगन विदित एंड हरी नॉट येट बट इट शुड बिगिन इन लाइक वन मिनट and rook f4 found by arjun nice move and arjun is so good arjun is so good he should be top 3 in india he is what about rook e8 it's so many ways to win maybe maybe the best is h7 if you go king h8 there is bd4 so bishop at 7 now you go rook g4 check if king h8 there is bishop d4 so king f8 and you can just pick this up i mean at the worst at the minimum or you can also go bishop c5 check and then it's over you lose the rook rapport lost can you check if Vishy's team will win. Oh, really? Vukesh won, so that's equal. Vishy drew equal. Sargisian is playing. Lupulescu won, so that's plus one. Sargisian is better. Cannot lose. And uh, Diach most likely cannot lose. So I think yeah, they are winning. 
they are winning. Vidit is playing against Mikhailovsky today. It's a tough uh, game. And also Rodstein, Hari, Hari Krishna is also playing a strong opponent in Rodstein. So it's going to be good fun there. I think Tabata Bai might resign here at this point. Uh, Archit, that uh, background noise is uh, Anish's game against um, Ponkratov, which I will, which I will uh, start to commentate in a bit. Like I already have it here, I'm, I have to change the thing, but can put it here. You see, Anish playing with black against Ponkratov. First game ended in a draw. This is the second game. And uh, Anish is black. Look at his pawn here. All ready to queen. White under some pressure for sure. I mean black under some pressure. No wait. One second. White under pressure because this pawn. You can go rook d. What did he do? Knight d3 was played. Rook a2. Knight b3. Ah okay. So this looks again pretty good for Ponkratov. I think Ponkratov has been playing really well. Huh? So this will be 1-1. One, one. This is the Global Chess Championship which uh, Anand lost to Ponkratov and then Nodirbek also lost to Ponkratov and now it is Anish versus Ponkratov. Bishop A4. Second game. Okay, going back to the European Club Cup. Rook F4. No move yet. Guys, how is um, how is the Indian team doing at the World Youth Olympiad. I think we lost to Kazakhstan or yeah, Kazakhstan yesterday. But what is the status today? I'll put up the results by the way here. Just a second. So you know what's happening. One, Gukesh won. And uh, who else won today? No one yet. But most likely Arjun will. Draw is Anand. And Nihal. And Gukesh and Arjun might win now. Vidit and uh, Hari will play in some time. So these are the results. Till now that have come. India beat India beat Uzbekistan today three and a half half. Wow. No, it's not Vidit versus Hari. It's Vidit and Hari playing for one team. By the way, Amin Tabatabai's time has gone to below three minutes now. That's a low, very low on time now. He's going to resign, I believe. Because See what to do, no? This is coming, this is coming, this is coming. There is too much. It's over.
गाइज ये देखो रो थैंक्स टू अभ्युदया नाउ वी हैव बोथ द गेम्स हेयर एंड हेयर दिस इज ई सी सी वी कैन फॉलो एंड ऑल्सो अनीश वर्सिज I'll put the live board also in some time. Um, uh, my voice is low or what? Why is it low? Now maybe better. well right now it seems like anish is going to draw this game he he may not be able to win this but he is definitely the favorite if he wins this he will go to the top 8 of the tournament right because he is already in 16 he is uh, he'll go to top 8 and then he'll go to canada to play the finals it's loud now very loud i hope it's okay let's go back ah he took on f2 taba taba he took on f2 f2 rook d8 actually arjun could have taken king f2 and he was still winning i don't know why arjun didn't take here maybe he was ah he didn't he didn't like what did he not like king e2 rook d8 ah but there was rook d7 now just stopping this so he took the with the rook now rook d8 rook d2 ah oh, is this some kind of a technical nightmare i don't think so but how do you how do you defend this pawn now and then this pawn is very solid no look if or if you would have taken with the king this is hanging so there's no time for anything else you go d2 of course i don't want to go king e2 because then rook d8 and then pawn is queening king d1 and then bishop c2 actually this is lost even but uh, after d2 go rook d7 and then it's very difficult to defend this pawn and then you're winning and if you don't play this and if you play like something like rook c6 trying here then rook g7 and rook f8 are mate so and if you play rook d8 like in the game then after rook e4 d2 ah you can do this very nicely check king h8 rook g7 It's a very cool move. Queen, check here, check here, mate. Nice. So rook d eight, rook d two, rook d six. Rook e seven. Maybe Bishop. Has, I mean, Arjun is winning, but this is definite some definitely some work. Two one. Yeah, he played Bishop at seven. Check King here. Let's see how he converts it. Meanwhile, very quickly checking what's up with Anish Giri. Oh my God. Oh my God! With just forty-eight seconds left for Pongkrato and thirty-four for Anish, this can go horribly wrong for anyone. More likely for black than white, it seems to me. But can we go knight g four? King f three. Rook f two. King g four. 
and Anish has 17 seconds on hand. What does he do? Knight g4, king f3. Has to find. Otherwise, he's just lost. Ugrato has 30 seconds left. Oh, so, so he went check king here. Okay. Is he going to do like repeat and draw? G2. Tanmay Agarwal, if king f1, rook takes f2. Because king f3, if you play rook f2, then this is hanging. King f3, if you play knight f2, your rook is hanging. So that's why king f3 must. Oh, they drew. They drew. Okay, going back to Arjun's game. He goes king f2. Arjun is not in any hurry as such to win. But I do have some concerns yeah, about this position. Oh, he goes rook p2. He wants to mate here. But also, you know, uh, Tabatabai's time is also very less. Meanwhile, Vidit Hari Krishna, no game has started. My God, what are, what are they doing? Rook f6 check, king e3 happens on the board. Now there's no mate because of rook here. But I think you should not be trading the rooks. As black but I don't think you have a choice let's say if you go bishop f5 I go a check you go here I take you take and I think this is lost because I just put my rook here okay or or yeah wherever I put my rook here then I bring my king up then I bring my pawn up then slowly I bring my king up here and you you will be you will be lost Yeah, they'll play later in the day, but I think already uh, it's later in the day. No, how much late now? I thought it was 10 30. Oh, he goes here. What now? Check Bishop G8 take on D3. No, free. Ah, or, or, guys, look at this. Take here. He, here, just Mardo. Mardo, Mardo. Mardo, Mardo. Now, how many of you know whether this position is winning or drawn? How do you know? Can anyone tell me very quickly? 15 minute delay on broadcast. Achha, so they have came starting now. Achha, 15 minute delay on broadcast. Key squares. Key squares, key squares. It's very important to know your key squares. Which are the key squares here? Which are the key squares? G4, F4, H4. Kamal Sharma, very good. This, this and this. So if the king can reach any one of these squares, white wins. And so you can, even if black comes here, 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 if the king could come here, good chances, but no, my king is in the, has reached the key square and I'm winning. King f6, king g4, king g6, g3. Whichever side you go out, I will, what is this called? I go into h5, what is it called? Guys, what is it called? When the king went here. I went here. Aditya Murti, very good. Not opposition, not shouldering. It's called outflanking. Kamal Sharma, very good. Chess Rajasthani, excellent. Jai Pandit, very good. It's called outflanking. Swanand Kopardekar. When you have the opposition here, look. Black takes the opposition. 
white pushes the pawn and takes the opposition back black goes here now you have a choice of keeping the opposition or outflanking as i told you today about the 10 rupee note on its own money does not have value if you don't exchange it for something right so that's the thing about opposition on its own opposition is useless but if you can outflank at the right time opposition becomes useful g4 rook at 6 rook e8 check oh he went g4 yeah i i don't know why arjun did not go like rook check 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 and win but okay he went anyway there are many ways to win now now you should not be now you should be careful because if you do this and this now you can't take 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 and take and take why because now the key squares of this pawn have reached here that means the white king has to make its way to any of these three squares which is extremely tough so if i go like king here 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 have not even managed to reach here leave alone this part so here after check he takes on d3 okay now the game of all the players of novi bor has started Oh, Hari plays e4, c6, d4, d5. He's playing against the Karo Khan. Okay, let me think what Hari will do. Hari will play... Because he, if he goes e5, I believe Rodstein will play c5. So, Hari won't play e5. Hari will play knight c3. Or maybe he will play E D C D Bishop D3. I think Hari may do that. E D E D C D Bishop D3. This is what Hari might play. Very simple. Or Knight C3, either of the two. E5, I don't think he'll go for this C5 line. Let's see what Vidit is doing. D4, D5, C4, E6, Knight F3, Knight F6, Knight C3. Guys, you remember I had just interviewed Mikhailovsky recently. He was Arjun's trainer from 2300 to 2550. Uh, and um, very, very good player from uh, Israel. US championships will start at 12 a.m. Okay, we'll, we'll also look at that. a tough team actually the israeli team is a tough team uh, this line mikhail royce michael royce versus h4 now this is a typical line uh let's look at evgeny postney navid navara okay nice game pick there and uh Let's go to Anish's game. How is he doing? Is game three begun? Not yet. Not yet. Why is Vidit taking a lot of time? I think Vidit is deciding between his favorite Ragozin or C5, which is the semi uh, semi Tarash, which he might go for. No, like not semi Tarash, but C5, CD, CD. I think Vidit might play Bishop B4 because. He wants to win. He wants to win against a 25-23 rated opponent. But going for a6 or h6 is not with its style. c6 is I don't think with it goes semi-slow too much. Knight bd7 he has never played. Could be a possibility. Bishop e7 is sort of too passive for him. I think he'll go bishop e4. Sherlock Holmes. Oh, Hari played e5. Acha. He was not afraid of this. Actually, and Rodstein also didn't go for this. He plays bishop f5. Knight d2. e6. Knight b3. Hari played. Uh... Hmm. 
Arjun's game, I think he must have won already, no? Not yet. Okay, he's, he's, he's there, he's there. So, king d3, rook g6, rook p4, king g7, king e3, king h6, king f4, bishop h7, rook b7, rook a6, rook h8. He's losing a piece now. There's no way, huh? Resign. Oh, what? Ah, okay, okay. resigns. Just a joke. Just a small little joke to keep us entertained. Rukesh and Arjun, the two youngsters, firing today once again. Wow, they won. Man, are they am aren't they amazing? What I really liked about in this game. Is how Arjun actually converted it. Sartak Chess, thank you so much for becoming backer of Indian Chess. Rohit Singh says 2736 and 2734 neck to neck. Okay, what did Vidit do? By the way, did he play the opening which I said? Yes, he did. Okay, let's learn from Vidit's Ragozin today. Okay, guys, today we are going to learn Ragozin. Okay, Vidit ke saath hi. Vidit ke saath, Vidit ke, Vidit se. So that we will learn this. I have always wanted to learn the Ragozin. So, Knight c3, Bishop b4. He gave a check. With it went Knight c6. He went Queen e3. With it castled, he went Queen c2. Abhi, how do we learn Ragozin? So here, we will quickly check d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight f3 d5 knight c3 bishop b4 check Aray, check knight c6 e3 castles queen c2 okay so now one move here is rook e8 and we'll also look at what vidit has been playing here because he's a very big expert of this opening i believe yeah here Rookie 8 has been with its move. Rookie 8. Always. And if we click black here, we will see that Vidit has played this one with Tuda, Wesley, and all the games Rookie 8 that has been Bishop D2 move. ओके तो क्या मतलब आइडिया क्या है तुमको e5 खेलना है कि नहीं व्हाई नॉट e5 हियर बाय द वे गाइस व्हाई इज दिस मूव बैक प्लेबल नो d 95 cd Kind of three. Oh, I remember this was the game of Hari. No, Nakamura. Knight d5, knight d5, queen d5. 
हाँ हिकारो वर्सेज मैग्नस क्वीन एफ थ्री रुक जी वन बिशप एफ फाइव एंड हिकारो वन या एक्स्ट्रा पीस ट्वेंटी सिक्सटीन हिकारो वर्सेज मैग्नस सम रैपिड क्वीन ई फोर बिशप सी थ्री बिशप जी सिक्स क्वीन सी फोर रिजाइन इट इज अ गुड मेमोरी मार्कर दीज गेम्स So what did what did it happen in the game by the way? After queen c two, he played. Acha, he's not played rook e eight yet. Maybe he's thinking of some other ideas. Yeah, ah, he played rook e eight. It's with its move here. And uh, Hari Krishna meanwhile has gone for knight b three, knight d seven, knight f three, knight e seven. Okay. Generally, Black's plans in such positions are a six. Knight uh, by the way, knight c eight. A six and c five, trying for that some kind of play. Also possible is h six g five. That's also playable. Bishop g seven castle. Let's go to Anish's game as uh, third game of Anish and yes, Anish and Pavel Pankratov have begun. Uh, and the score here. I'll put it here like this. Anish versus Pankrato. One one. So Anish was white. E four, e six, e four, e five, knight c three, knight f six, e five, knight d seven, f four, c five, knight f three, knight c six, e six, e three, so queen d two, b six, bishop d three, bishop b seven, castles c four, bishop e two, f five. Oh my god! And Anish took actually. Anish had a very good idea here, guys. Can you think white to play? It's a typical idea that you should know in such positions. While you write, I'll fill the water. Uh, Siddharth says Nihal Sarin Plateau. Should we be worried as Nihal fans? No, I don't think so. No need to worry yet. I think Nihal is doing pretty well, and he should. I mean, his game quality is pretty decent, pretty good. He's playing well. And he drew with a strong GM, so that's not bad. So here, guys, the move that I was looking for knight g5. Everyone wants to play, but guys, knight g5. You are attacking here. He can defend it. So a very typical idea here is to play the move g4. One person did mention it here, g4, and that is. Uday doy forty. Well done, Uday. And the point is after take. Now you go knight g five, attacking here. And if he plays this, now you can take here. And next move you want to even push on with f five. So yes, you are weakening your king. Now remember, why is this king weakening? Okay, in this position, why is it fine? Can anyone tell me?
बिकॉज नो बिकॉज द सेंटर इज वेरी स्टेबल लॉक्ड सेंटर करेक्ट दिस सेंटर इज वेरी स्टेबल एंड वेन यू प्ले दिस इट इवन दो योर किंग लुक स्लाइटली वीकेंड ब्लैक कैनॉट टेक एडवांटेज ऑफ इट इजिली एंड आफ्टर एफ आई इट विल बी वाइट हुज पीसेस वुड बी मोर एक्टिव ओके गोइंग बैक अनिश टूक ई टेक्स एफ सिक्स विच वॉज नॉट द बेस्ट डिसीजन नाइट एफ सिक्स नाइट टू ई फाइव बी फाइव बिशप एफ थ्री रुक बी एट रुक ए वन बी फोर ए बी रुक बी फोर एंड नाउ अनिश फाइंड दिस रियली नाइस मूव एफ फाइव एंड नाउ आफ्टर एफ फाइव वन ऑफ द की एलिमेंट इज दैट इफ यू टेक 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 Fe6, D5 is terribly weak. And it doesn't work. So he plays Rook B2, Fe, Knight B4. No, come on, this is too much, too much. Pongkrato is going too much. Bd1, good move by Anish, defending C2, Queen A5. Look at this king. horribly in the center placed and i think here he must finish him off i think a very good way to finish him off would be i mean it's not like winning winning but just bishop g5 take take and then sack this at the right moment opening up his king entirely and then bishop h5 check and this is going to be really tough for um, Pavel now. Anish Giri, really. If he wins this, that would be amazing. Uh, Kaivalya says, "I had improved myself in chess, but was out of touch for a month and a half, and now I want to get back to my level. How to do it?" Uh, Kaivalya, the best way I would suggest is to just play a few games and then look at them carefully. like what where you are going wrong just just start playing maybe take a little bit more time than what you usually did so that you have enough time to think and that would be a good way to get back just start playing and also solve some tactics you know um, just figure out maybe give some answers here in the commentary so when i ask questions try to calculate get your mind thinking that's the most important thing Kamal says many times in my game I reach rook versus two three connected pawns end game. Can you please make a video on such end games? How to win or defend such positions? Kamal, every rook end game is very complicated in general. Like it's very different, so it's not so easy to generalize. But maybe if you have one game or something which you want something to be spoken about, you can send me an email on chessbase india at gmail that you couldn't understand that end game at that point. and i'll try to explain it but to make a generalized video on rook end games with two three pawns not easy because where the pawns are are they two two on one side one extra are they three two on one side you know that way ah rook versus two three connected pawns okay got it rook versus two three connected pawns uh, also like depends on where the pawns are and how advanced they are where your king is where your opponent's king is so these are the little things there is one very nice video i've made nihal versus um, mamikon gharibia and it's a very nice game where nihal uses his rook to stop two of his opponent's pawns i think anish is just making sure that he is able to I think even the very fact that this king is in the center, if you can just go knight d seven and exchange pieces there, like let's say take, 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 this is over, no? Bishop g five. I think Anish will go for knight d seven. So tempting, so tempting. This is your rook is just here. Rook is saying to uh, the bishop, knight pawn, 
आई निकलो रस्ते से एंड लेट मी गेट इन सो दीज टू पॉइंट आर लाइक ओके ओके गाइज यू आर मेकिंग मेकिंग वे फॉर द रुक एंड आफ्टर टेक 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 बिशप इज लाइक ओके रुक लेट्स गो ओके लेट्स सी वॉट हैपन्स एंड गोइंग बैक टू द गेम्स ऑफ विदित एंड हरी नॉट योर so vidit versus hari bishop e2 h6 we spoke about this idea g5 did happen uh, vidit versus hari nahi rotstein versus hari bishop d2 bg7 so what's a typical move here guys white to play what is a typical idea in such positions black needs to gain space on the queen side what is a typical idea here Yes, actually, what you guys wrote is correct. A four, Kamal, Viraj, Alston, Rakshit, Sambag, Taskin, Pathik, Abhishek, and Niket. I also thought Hari might go for it. Uh, in this position, he might also go for A four, A four, A five. But he went Knight E one. Maybe C five makes a lot of sense now. C five, if C three, C four already looks very strong. And if you go D C five, I'm not so sure after ninety five. I like Black's position. Okay, let's look at Vidit's game. So after Rook E eight, here we looked at till here. Then he played B D two. Okay, Vidit went back. Bishop F eight. Fine. Bishop e2 and now with it played knight b4 okay queen b1 take and now he might want to put his knight here so you take back and what do you how do you develop this bishop now guys how to develop this bishop yes b6 very good making way for the bishop here narendra khandekar devend tiwari supratik chakraborty well done b6 a3 knight oh bishop a6 this seems like with its prep huh? because i thought he might go knight d5 and then bishop b7 he went bishop a6 bishop e2 back takes takes knight d5 and now uh, his opponent has been thinking for 4 minutes i like how vidit uh, really equalized the game because let's say if i go nb d5 here maybe after castles bishop b7 bishop e2 i think white Would claim a small edge here or what? Maybe black is still fine. No, after b five, c five. Or maybe he did not like the fact that after n b d five there is bishop b five attacking this rook. And once you play your bishop here, then a very typical idea is to go back. So this is something which Vidit avoided with this move bishop a six. 
now there is no such bishop b5 maneuver this bishop b5 maneuver happens a lot in many different openings like for example one game that i had played d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight f3 b6 um knight c3 bishop b7 a3 d5 takes takes g uh, e3 g6 and now check forcing c6 and then going back you know often you want to just in just make this bishop a little bad or provoke it coming here then go back and that happens often and this is exactly what uh, was his plan if vidit had gone knight p d5 he might have gone bishop b5 provoke bishop d7 because you don't want to put your rook on e7 that looks like a terrible square to put your rook on so you go bishop here and then bishop d3 and then bishop is like i wanted to be here so small little subtleties there bishop e2 bishop e2 knight e2 and knight bd5 and next uh, vidit will play c5 and i think he has equalized that is beyond question um and he can slowly start putting pressure on his opponent so good opening played by vidit there meanwhile hari krishna after 91 waiting for his opponent's move i think rodstein must go c5 it seems good maybe what hari's idea is that if you castle he wants to play f4 that's why he brought his knight back and to c5 i don't think c3 is a good idea because of c4 he ha he must have something up his sleeve here take 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 bishop e5 bishop check is knight c6 so yeah i think black is doing very well here exactly what black wants so if rodstein goes c5 i think hari might not be very happy with the opening position that he's got now let's go to uh, anish's game because he was totally winning in that position i don't know how he has dealt with it he won he won already oh he did play knight d7 anish op guys anish op knight d3 kya hai games ah if you take here he wants to take this okay got it this is hanging what about rook e2 blindfold chess thank you so much for super chat lot of indian chess today perfect kavrit sagar bhai thank you uh, blindfold chess he takes on f6 first gf oh gf bishop f6 no now check anyway because g6 this is hanging in certain lines so yeah gf check king d8 रुक के वन अरे बाप रे बस क्या नाइट डी फाइव क्वीन डी टू बिशप डी टू रुक सी टू ओ वॉट अ मेट वॉट अ मेट लुक इट दिस नो two scissoring bishop here in the position just completely cutting everything what a move amazing that means uh, anish now moves to 2-1 beautiful chess i think anish is going to get the better of pongkratov and anish is showing why he is such a strong player this is borden mate or similar um i don't know what this mate i think yeah borden's mate is similar but uh, it is with two bishops on these two die actually it's like bishops on yeah i think so yeah it's it's very unusual because borden's mate usually happens on like the queen side castling positions with one bishop on this diagonal and the other bishop on this diagonal like this um uh, but yeah this is this seems like a borden's mate so last 
uh, game will start between Anish and Ponkratov. And uh, till then, let's go to Vidit's game and see how he his opponent uh, responded. Oh, opponent very ambitious. This is the thing about Mikhailevsky. Huh? He's very ambitious. 97. Because, see, I mean, you can go like castles, c5, dc, bishop c5, knight d4, and you can just say, oh, it's equal or, or just maybe b takes c5. And say that this is an equalish position. But when you play e4, knight e7, you have already sort of burned the bridges, huh? somewhat. Like e5, knight d5. I was teaching Borden's gate today. Borden's mate today only to my girlfriend, Rakshit Singh. Rakshit Singh, on one hand, you always write to me messages that my parents don't allow me to go to any tournaments, uh, going outside or anything. So they are okay with you having a girlfriend. E5. I think Vidit has to play knight fd c5 or he can go knight d7 c5. Ash, Ashi is saying they would not know about the gf of course. And here I am talking uh, live on uh, stream with 1000 people. You think that this is not uh, going to stay like for the rest of human history rakshit singh says they don't they don't know or they don't have a problem they don't know acha and rakshit you are confident that they won't see this Yeah, guys, let's timestamp this moment and let's send it across to Rakshit's parents so that they can sort of send him to tournaments, you know, he can start traveling because then they know that, okay, he's grown up. Ajaya VB says, apparently Amin said that Hans was his second. Helped him to prepare openings in one of the interviews after his game against Wesley. So in GP semis. Okay. Giri Babu Sagurthi says, Sagar, I am getting addicted to your channel. Are bapre. Oh, I don't know how should I react to this. Should I get happy? Should I feel sad? Like, are you saying, Sagar, I'm getting addicted to your channel? Or you're saying, Sagar, I'm getting addicted to your channel? No, I can't understand through your message. Oh my God, is he going like, what? He's just saying, Mikhailovsky is saying to Vidit, Bhai, tujhe mate karke chhodne wala hu main. Check mate with knight and bishop. Okay, knight g6 played. Stopping. And I have absolutely no doubt that Mikhailovsky is going to go h4.
श्याम सुंदर आस्क टुडे लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल आर आस्किंग सच अ क्वेश्चन हे सागर इज इट पॉसिबल फॉर अ ट्वेंटी इयर ओल्ड इंटरमीडिएट प्लेयर टू बिकम ग्रैंड मास्टर इन टेन टू फिफ्टीन इयर्स ओ ही प्लेड एच फोर you know it's like this uh, these videos which some of the influencers make they make videos like double your money in 10 years or something something like that <laughs> विशाल उपाध्याय से सागर भाई को भी पता नहीं इसलिए आई है मैं वही तो बट अभी विदित का पोजीशन बहुत ही नाजुक है वेरी वेरी ऑन द एज बिकॉज ओपोनेंट इज गॉन कंप्लीटली ऑन दी ऑफेंसिव एंड ही वांट्स टू प्ले एच फाइव एंड देन ब्रेक थ्रू सो इफ यू प्ले लेट्स से एच सिक्स pushing the knight away what is the winning move here guys can anyone tell me what's the winning move for white yes absolutely right all those who found the move h5 well done a uh, lot of people actually at uh, 11 13 in the night naman mithun maybe divit mayuresh jay parth rohit arbaz kuran well done h5 beautiful and this is very big problem because if the knight moves there is a mate on h7 and if you take here i take here and the rook opens up and this opens up and It's very bad. So actually, with it once again finds the only move, Bishop e7. I love, I love uh, how Mikhailovsky has taken the attack onto with it. One question that needs to be answered here is what happens to Knight h7? Because I think this is what Mikhailovsky wants to do. it's a very instructive moment in the game guys because after knight at 7 if king at 7 here let's first ask the chat what would you do here black to play naman says can't with it play h5 himself naman if you play h5 in that position the g5 square is permanently weakened also g4 might be a very very plausible idea g4 and g4 h5 so just to uh, build up on your point here if h4 h5 firstly you have to consider knight g3 here and knight f4 which are very powerful moves but even g4 and then if you take h5 this is very bad so by the way knight at 7 uh, not bishop h4 no 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 If you play bishop h4, queen e4, h5 opens up. This is terrible for you. Terrible news. But the, you know the the right move here is not even king h7. Because of h5 and white wins, this is too strong an attack. You don't have to let him open up. So a flank attack. Here's the your hint. A flank attack must be met with a central break. central breakthrough let's see how many of you can find it until now guransh bhushan and rakshit have found but immediately after the hint rohit chsd mustafa varun kamal tanay and mithun have found it well done c5 so it's very difficult to play a move like this but it makes a lot of sense because once yes i know you lost a pawn but you are breaking through in the center and once he takes something like this your knight can jump in check is coming in and this is what you want so remember whenever your attack whenever your opponent is going all out against you on the flank your first reaction should no, never be ki how can i 
play a move like h5 and play on flank your first reaction should always be can i strike in the center so with it after this knight h7 would have most likely played c5 that's the reason why Mikhailevsky goes rook h3 so he's going all out and now with your knowledge guys you know that he's going all out what do you do and this is where you know knowing certain rules of chess uh, improves your possibility of finding the right move these yes very good Lakshya Mundra, Divit Sharma, Abhinav Gupta, Tanishk. Vimlesh says, but c5 blocks bishop's long diagonal. Which bishop? Vimlesh. This bishop's long diagonal, which you are not going to block it. You are going to take this pawn. If he takes here, you are going to take this pawn. You are breaking the center. So it's not blocking. It won't get blocked. Abhinav Gupta, uh, why didn't Anand play in round, play in, uh, sorry, what am I doing? Abhinav Gupta says, how is knight f8? So, so it was Abhinav Gupta who said, how is knight f8? Tarun Paliwal says, Anand didn't play in round 2. So I said, Abhinav Gupta, why didn't Anand play in? So knight f8 is a good move, but it's slightly passive. And you don't want to be playing such a move if you have an active possibility like c5. So I'm very, very happy and pleased to see that in this position, there is only one move that ha has been mentioned by all of you. That is C5. So good. So good to see. And well done. Lakshya, Divit, Abhinav, Tanishk, Arbaz, Nishant, Aditya, G, uh, Rohit, Dubey, Vinayak, Agarwal and Guranj. And I will appreciate King E2 by Anon, E Mouse and Dream Chaser who just wanted to be different so they they wanted their name there because i said bhai sab log ne ek hi move laya we also should be path breakers so they said other moves appu raja says in this sort of position is it better to have a bishop or knight in such positions it is better to be just alive on the board as black king should be safe Bishop Hoya Knight, right now it's more important to strike in the center. And as we discussed, Vidit does go c5. Beautiful move in the center, hitting that pawn. And as we all uh, saw, Vidit, you know, these top players reach a rating of 2700 plus. Not because they are just, um, you know, good at just, I mean, talking about chess. They play good moves. They understand chess deeply. And that's exactly what Vidit is doing here. Shyam Sundar says, Hi Sagar, it's the Halloween season. Why don't you upload a video on Halloween Gambit? Okay. Let's look at um, if Anish's game has begun or first let's quickly see if Rodstein. Oh my god, Rodstein found C5. Hari Krishna under pressure. Rodstein took how much time to play this? 13 minutes. Very cool. Very cool. You know, guys, think about it. Here is Rodstein. He's playing against Hari Krishna, who is one of the best in the world. They are just 10 minutes into the opening. Hari Krishna plays 91 in 26 seconds. And Rodstein has many normal moves like castles, a6, a5. Yet he takes 13 minutes. He understands that this might not be in the spirit of the position and finds the move c5. Because now the center is under pressure and this show, this is actually classical chess is that's why appreciated by a lot of people because you get that time to understand that a move like 91 is not the best and you can take your time and sort of play against it. Whereas in rapid and blitz, you don't get time. So, so move like C5 is not even found or if it is found, then why quickly play C3 there? 
But here now Hari has time to think to what should I do? Should I go bishop b5? Should I take here and so on? Sagar bhai, any view on Hikaru reaction on Raunak? No, I, I don't know. When did he do it? When did Hikaru react on it? Rohit Dubey says, Sagar bhai, how was g4 followed by h4 here? Here, g4, bishop back, f4. Maybe it's too risky, no? Say I take, you take bishop f4, I play cd, knight d4 and this is hanging. So you may just lose a center, your center is just getting disrupted. No, I don't think Mustafa anyone is Hari's prep. I think Hari has been, after uh, a certain point, he's just been free rolling. What happened in this game? This is an exciting game. This is so exciting. You know, when uh, Vidit played uh, Knight BD5, I was like, guys, chalo sote hai. Ah, baut lamba game hoga, what boy. But then you know Vic Victor Mikhailevsky. He's a very, very aggressive player. And he goes E4, E5, Knight G5, H4, Rook H3. Wow, what a game. Theek hai. Ab kya hoga? I think if he goes all out on the attack, no. Vidit, Vidit is a very good defender when he has got a very, very stable position. Ankur Jain says play knight f8. You know, Vidit knows that he has this move in worst case scenario. So let's say if h5, he can always go back. But I think bishop g5 is strong. So maybe he will go rook g3, defending this, threatening here. And I was thinking if you take h5, makes sense. I have to go back. There's no other move. And then uh, it seems like black's position is very solid. And now this is hanging. So I believe that this is this before with it. His moves are natural. They are not they are not something too deep. Like c5, take on d4, bring the knight back, attack here, rook c8, queen c7. So it's not like he has to figure out some very deep sequence of moves. That's the reason why I think these are very typical with it kind of positions where he's able to make those accurate calculations. What also we if I think what I've started to realize a lot deeper in with its games by sort of analyzing commentating a deeply is that whenever it demands something truly deep calculation of like eight moves seven five seven moves on also not uh, the moves there are too many branches and all with it <coughs> and also it's it's like attacking or sacrificing something that is where with it often uh, hesitates while when it is about forcing moves which are natural and which is his 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 feel of chess is very good he, he understands those positions very quickly and that you could also see when he was solving those studies with Anish whenever there were moves like you know uh, have to find some typical ideas even though they were not easy he could quickly sense them but whenever it was like okay now you have to sit down and calculate like five different variations and all he was not very sure so with it is that kind of player accurate calculations in short variations when they get deeper or when there is about sacrificing, uh, that's where he kind of struggles. So in this position, 
it's easier for him to play this is his type of positions these are all natural moves to consider and he's very accurate here mustafa says vd's rook f6 speaks for itself now of course for example uh it's it's not like you can generalize these top players each one can ca do all of these things but the point is that if you take like 20 examples or maybe 50 or 100 examples then this comes out it's not like they can never do it or with it can never calculate well or all of that doesn't exist that that much has to be understand understood okay so here knight at seven by the way as a question asked by roshan roshan the main point is we don't touch this knight at all because if we take h5 is very strong what do we do black to play Yeah, CD4, exactly, very good. All those who mentioned CD4, Kiran, Abhishek, Himanshu, Aryan, Rakshit, what you are doing is you are not caring about the attack here, like even H5, you just take. And so, yeah, Rook G3 has happened, by the way, Rook G3 played on the board. It's getting uh, intense. Actually, uh, I, I stopped here after CD4, H5, Knight F8. But here, white has only one move to kind of stay stable. Can you find it? White to play. Otherwise, he will lose this pawn. This is this under pressure. What is the move? Mudit Gupta, you are right. Rakshit, Aryan, Naman, all of you, Azar, Kushal, Mustafa, if you want to play f4, the problem with this move is bishop takes g5. Now, if you take fg, I am taking the e5 pawn. So you go and you take rook takes. And now I just play h6. So suddenly your attack is going nowhere. My knight is jumping here. If you move your rook back, my queen can enter the position. This looks terrible, terrible. Also f5 stuff in the air. So yeah, no, you can't play f4. So you must play knight f3. And now <clears throat> is another moment to just take stock of what is happening because what white wants to do is he wants to play queen e4. And with one, two, three, four, five pieces here. Let's say, for example, with it goes rook c8, queen e4. He wants to sort of launch a very big attack in the position. But maybe queen e4, there's knight c5 here. And at 7, you are saying, huh? Oh, Prashant Singh. You want to sack here. Maybe a bit too much, no? Takes bishop here. I think bishop g5 should do the trick here. Also knight g5. Yeah, that seems good. That seems good. Take, take. And black is better. Okay, Hare Krishna. Let's go to that game. Hare Krishna did take with the knight. Knight takes, pawn takes. I think bishop e5 must be played. Why not? Take, check, knight c6, I believe. Oh, knight c6, there's knight d3. Um, maybe best was king f8. How easy is that to find? I don't know. King f8. Queen e2. Queen c7. Attacking here. King g7, maybe next move and this is also I mean. 
think hari hari has to be careful yeah to avoid getting into serious trouble took g3 while well, with it is thinking i think with it must take him but also he must be considering knight f8 so that if h5 he can go knight f h4 to f5 but that's not with its style i think knight f8 and knight h4 maybe he'll take on because you can take h5 knight f8 knight f3 this is where he must be calculating Let's go to uh, Anish's final round game against uh, Ponkrato and see what's happening there. Is Anish on track to sort of winning the winning his round of 16? So Anish was black and of course he goes for his trusted Nidorf. CD, Knight D4, Knight F6, Knight C5, Knight F3, A6, Bishop E3 e5 knight f3 bishop e7 knight d2 b5 a4 b4 knight d5 okay you don't want to i mean this is defended so you can't take it so knight e d5 e d5 castles knight c4 attacking here so knight d7 looks like forced yeah a5 still looking at this square f5 rook a4 rook b8 maybe f4 was possible here trapping sort of trapping the bishop forcing him bishop b6 rook b8 bishop d2 rook b5 bishop b4 king h8 bishop d6 this is a very interesting move king h8 how did anish find this no clue yeah was he in his prep at this point king h maybe this is his prep wow this could be his preparation rook b2 now anish is just pawn up and i mean clearly better i think anish is going to take this home he's not pawn up but Look at white spawns, they are so weak. Bishop b5, maybe e4, maybe knight e5. It's too much here. Anish just needs a draw to move forward. Kinjal Datta Chaudhary says, Sagar by Tata Steel Field, please. But, you know, uh, Kinjal, it's not my uh, duty to reveal it, right? Because if I if I reveal it and uh, the organizers don't want it to be revealed or they are going to change the field, how, how can I reveal it? Let them do it, no? They might, they might do it very soon. They're still looking to finalize everything. So, right now, I don't want to reveal it before the organizers do. All Indian youngsters are playing there. Gukesh, Arjun, um, Nihal, Prag, and I think Vidit. These are the players playing there. No, Tanya would be there as the commentator. Tanya has been the commentator since the inception of the event and she would be there. That's how we will. Um, let's look at this. Yeah, with it took on d4, right? So cd4, h5, and gf8 happened. 
now the question is whether uh, Mikhailovsky goes knight f3. I think he will. So that's the only move. There's no other. Oh, one second. No, one second, one second, one second. Mikhailovsky very likely, very likely could also play queen e4. Because this is such a natural move. Switching your queen from here, going to the king side. Oh, sorry, here. It's a very natural move for Mikhailovsky. And this is where Vidit could play a very power. This, this move, next move, guys, can you find it? Black to play. Let's see. I I will also be in Kolkata, most likely Kinjal Datta. Yeah, I... Vignesh says, Sagar, we need more collaboration with other Indian YouTubers to bring in new audience. Do you plan anything in this? Yeah, I'm, I've been thinking about this for sure. Um, either you do new collabs or you do new stuff, new things. And uh, definitely on my mind, uh, need, to, need to sit down and do more of that. Um, yeah. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. I'll try to think of it. One of my requirements has always been that someone whom I work with on chess should sort of be at least interested in learning it or getting better or whatever. So let me see what are the answers mentioned here. Knight c5. I thought you guys would go for it. But knight c5. Queen g4 looks very dangerous. I mean you have a check here. But the rook is controlling it. So you can't do that. Um, the right move here by the way. And one which has been mentioned by a few of you. F5 is very interesting. But I mean here. F. But a better move and a very nice move actually is f6 it's a very tough move to play very tough but the main point is that i'm attacking here and here and if you were to take this i would take with the knight hit the queen not allow your queen to get here so whoever said f6 in that position very good job jokies gagan ajinkya himanshu well done Ah, he went knight of three, found this move. Okay. This is now getting tricky. This is very tricky position. Very. Because, and it's very creative, yeah? The way Mikhailovsky has played this is tremendous. Because for Vidit, there are all sorts of threats that he has to worry about. One is bishop h6 attacking here. The other one is queen e4 with queen moving in. So my, I mean, from a perspective of trying to defend such a position or just, you know, the most natural move that comes to your mind is doing something active now f6 is something you don't want to do here because of bishop h6 and it's just over this is just game over so if you play queen c7 Wondering how strong is bishop at actually bishop at six g6 and black is doing okay. So queen c7, maybe you go queen e4. I think that's very likely. Knight c5 hitting the queen, queen g4 threatening a mate. 
knight d3 check king f1 g6 yeah it looks scary it looks it looks dangerous for sure you know what what generally happens is um and this happens often in in life like you must be going through a phase where you are under severe pressure like there are deadlines exams and you just are under pressure but you know what you have to do the moment it ends like many times for example uh, there is a deadline that you have to meet you have to submit something the moment it ends you feel some kind of a relief but at the same time you know that the final exams are coming although they are not like very soon like in a week maybe a month away but it's even more dangerous to meet it the so same way while white was attacking like you know this way so it was like this e5 so it's like project like g5 y wa h4 some submission b7 rook h3 c5 you know it's like this is happening next day next day next day but now after knight f3 it's like with it now has suddenly time he's like okay exams after a month now final exams coming up and this is where you suddenly start to get a bit nervous because you have time and this is a very very dangerous state to be in because if you don't make use of this time very well then white's attack comes with even greater force Okay, let's quickly go and check what Anish is up to. Has he already won? Oh, he won. Anish Giri won. Wow. To catch three, huge blunder, huh? Oh, his opponent just missed. The bishop c4, queen g2 is mate. Prevent rook g3 because you can't take, queen is hanging. We just moved the queen because now if you take the rook, I'll take your rook. Oh. Well done, Amish. So Anish wins. And moves to the last eight of the tournament. Anish really showing why he is one of the best out there. 
And let's go to Hari Krishna's game. Did he play bishop e5? Oh, he didn't take. DC, he played queen c7. And now Hari went knight f3. Okay, interesting that he didn't go for this. I don't know why. Queen c7. And now queen c5 most likely. What did Anish tweet? H-E tweet. Let's go. Anish tweeted, what's the weather in Toronto in November? Nice. Let's retweet it. VWR Chess Master, some new event huh? that Anish is first bug house chess tournament with participation of top players will take place right after WR Chess Masters on 26th of February 23. What bug house? Unbelievable, amazing. Vidit. Oh, with it was d3. Okay, I didn't expect this move. Once again, Ankit says, What about bishop h5 in with its current position? You mean bishop h4? Yeah, Ankit, I think if bishop h4. To attack the rook, he will just move the rook up and attack you back. That won't be very helpful. D3 by Vidit is a very, you know, like forcing move. Because if you play queen D3, what Vidit wants to do is go knight C5. And this is exactly his point. Because if you take, take, Vidit is not going to get checkmated here. And this is what he wants. Maybe he takes with the E rook and puts the other rook here. So this is exactly how he wants to play. But I think Mikhailovsky, knowing the kind of player he is, he will find a very nice move here. Guys, can you think about it? I think it's, it's a very, very important move here. Yes, bishop h6 is what really scares the hell out of me. And uh, Niket, Saluja, KNN, Sahil Gaming, Aditya Bhopale, Moksh Mehta and Kaustup Kamble. You guys are, have suggested this move. And the point is after d takes e2, rook g7, king h8. Position like this is just very dangerous after queen e4 and I want to switch my queen over here and checkmate you and you can't move your knight away because where do you move it and also h7 is hanging so let's say if knight c5 in a position like this queen g4 threatening a mate and even if you go like check I can go king e2 there's no more checks I think if if Mikhailovsky goes bishop at six, Vidit will have to play uh, g6. You know, g6, or maybe he can inter interpose d2, but I don't think he'll do that. He'll go g6, queen d3, knight c5, queen e3.
can we play can we play let's just an idea queen d3 here ah exactly queen d3 that is the best move and uh, yeah this looks this looks different i think this is this is where vidit will be able to hold it maybe this move this is where i think mikhailovsky after bishop h6 d3 g6 might not want to take queen d3 because with its next two moves are very easy and the queens get traded so maybe interpose uh, like let's put this in let's put this in g yeah yeah i think with it has in under control i think he will be able to you know us championship has started huh i don't know if leeches is covering it it they should they should so all st louis events happen on leeches like i should they have a 30 minute delay oh hans neiman versus christopher u d4 knight f6 c4 best move reminds of hans versus magnus online oh knight c3 played what does hans neiman do now d5 of course i think he'll play d5 no but there's this new report right which was published by chess.com d5 where they have like said hans has cheated more than 100 times that's what something like that in online chess that's what they claim i have to read it more carefully but and the question is that otb chess in online chess i mean he's playing here at over the board chess i don't know I think overall this is going to be a tough event for Hans. This is my my understanding because this is not going to be easy at all for him. The report says there is no evidence Hans cheated in OTB chess. But I think sooner or later uh, online and OTB will sort of overlap right because you are the same person. And if online chess has gained so much traction, so many people follow it, it's so important. You can't just say, oh, this guy is... Um, it's, it's like a lot like, let's say, someone does something in a co one country and then goes in another country and then can live there the rules of that country are not he's not broken the rules of that country but yeah kind of complex So let's go and oh no d3 here yeah, i thought he played bishop at six i'm very excited to actually uh i think i'll stop streaming the point where the queens get traded here i think it will go this way sorry not that queen d3 and i don't think that mikhailovsky can keep the queens on the board because if you if you play this position against with it i think he will be able to hold this yes there could be some pressure on him but not so much
Umang Mittal says in the report it is said whenever Hans toggled his window while in a game his accuracy increased every time clearly due to using engine. My question is that there is a back camera right how do you toggle your window? Harshil Shah says do you think playing bullet can improve your speed at calculation during blitz? No I don't think so. Because bullet you are not even calculating most of the time you are playing on intuition like the first move that you see so it's not about calculation if you ask me does it help to improve my sort of board vision or uh, my instincts or my feel maybe yes Abhinav Gupta, yes, I'll, I'll read, I'll most likely read it very carefully and make something on it in a day or two. Title Tuesday doesn't require back camera, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm surprised that he was toggling his windows in... Mm -hmm. Okay, while he's thinking, let's go to Hans' game. What? Hans has not made his move. After bishop f4, he's thinking for 5 minutes. Okay, let's also look at some other games. Lenderman, Aronian, top, uh, top players playing at the US Championship. I was looking at uh, sort of US Championship and I was, I was thinking to myself like, what have they sort of achieved you know over the years us championship it's like it's a national championship and india also has its national championships but our national championship is not a closed round robin event they've made it open and it would make sense to do it something like that like the top 10 players of india facing off against each other and especially with the talent pool that we have the prize money that can be brought in there has to be like a very very powerful national championship and you can sort of stream it nicely you can have this beautiful um opening ceremony during the event nice place where it is held you have all these top players playing i think the top 10 players of india the national championship would be an epic one, right? No, US championship is Abhinav Gupta. I don't think it's like candidates. You have Aronian, you have Vestiso, you have Karuana and Domingas. These four. Okay, then you have like Sam. I mean, Lenderman is 2535. Moradia Badi is 2534. Sevian is 26, Wander Liang is 252608. So it's not, it is a strong event, but I think the Indian Championship would be not, if not similar in terms of like Aronian, Wesley, so Karuana, but I think the average rating of the top 14 Indian players would be equal to this tournament. So I think it's a very good idea to, to organize something of that type. Maybe. I'm not sure. No, Abhimanyu is not playing. Abhimanyu Mishra is going to play uh, the Challengers Chess Tour. So, Dominguez versus Karuana is just uh, Berlin. Uh, this line. And Dominguez didn't go for this, this, and this. He went for d5 takes takes in this line okay interesting oh hans played e6 
knight b5 knight a6 e3 Pratichi says that does sound amazing from the spectator pers perspective but isn't the present Indian Open format more egalitarian to allow everyone a chance to win? Yeah, I think what should be most likely a good format is maybe top 5 or top 7 Indians get to play. This is what I think used to happen in the past as well in the national you can say the national super championship or something like that earlier it was called national challengers and national premier so national challengers will have all the players and national premier will have the top some few top gms directly seeded but there was very little incentive for the top players to play national premier there was one incentive which was like if you win it you get direct world cup spot but from the prize money perspective i believe the highest prize money is 5000 uh sorry um 5 lakh i was going to say 5000 dollars but 5 lakh and i think for the us championships The total, the first prize is sixty thousand dollars. That is, that is 48, 48 lakh rupees. That's why these players are playing. Total prize fund of two sixty two thousand dollars. Crazy, yeah, nearly two crores. Oh, we have Mahe Manas Dadich who's contributed 1000 on help chest. Thank you so much. By the way, guys, a surprise incoming. A big surprise. Any guesses on whose it is who's joining us? One second, sir. I have always on mute this. Uh, one sec, one sec. Always on mute Zoom. Always on mute. This is spoiled my surprise, sir. Okay, suddenly Roger is there. Let me see here. Here, you hear me now? Hello, hello. Oh, hello. One sec, one sec, one sec. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, one second. One second. Hello. Hi. Hello? Anish. Okay, of course. Anish just trying to set Boomer okay, sir. Boomer okay. <laughs> Boomer not Boomer OP in night off though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. I don't think I uh, let's see, let's see. Hello? Yeah, hello. We can hear you well. Yeah, you can, eh? Yeah, excellently. Output device on here now. Hello. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I can hear you as well. If you hear me well, that's good. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. Great. What a what a win, uh, Anish. Like just simply you crashed through, crashed through. Yeah, I was lucky. I mean, the first two games were uh, very played very well. I think. Yeah. And um, the last two, I was very uh, very lucky. Really. I mean, I thought that this uh, French game you just dominated. Yeah, I mean, it's not often you go with these bishops to the side and like, hello, like butterfly checkmate. <laughs> they, they call it the, I was, they, people were asking, is it the Borden's mate? Because there's this famous uh, mate of Borden. But it's always like, you know, this uh, sacrifice queen takes c6, b takes c6, bishop a6 mm -hmm. on the queen side mate with yeah. the two. But yes, you, yes, 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 yes. your two bishops were in different. No, it was so very cute. Yeah, I think he played these positions very, very suspiciously. Also, the first game he was playing it very dubious. There, I didn't punish him in the opening. Mm -hmm. 
I missed the cute thing, by the way. In the first game, we can show briefly. Bishop takes h7. That was very nice. Mm -hmm. I saw afterwards with the uh, engine I, on chess.com. Uh, yeah. And let me just... Uh, because I, I couldn't follow the first game. I saw from game number two. I missed that. Okay, once again. Yeah, here. Yeah, first game is just one nice, nice nuance in the opening. So he went f6, ef, gf. Yeah, he played it. Uh, rook b8 is a little bit dubious move and waste of time, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, he can also castle first. So, okay, now I take, take the take before bishop d3, f6. Yeah. yeah, castle, castle. I could also play now here better moves. I played b5, not sure it's good. But knight b7, ef, gf, um, knight d4, and now knight c5. It's very suspicious for him. gf, I feel, was maybe suspicious. And now I have uh, this, I later saw I have this very beautiful trick, queen g4 check. Yeah, I, I thought I played king h1, queen h5, rook f3, but actually queen g4 check, very concrete, king h8, and bishop takes h7. That's, uh, yeah, something I was capable of, but I just, I wanted to accelerate, play a bit faster, and just play the by hand. But I mean, this if is he takes strong. this, this is because over, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's beautiful. So, maybe this, if... No, I think queen h5, bishop g6, mate. It's, ah. it's just, uh, I think, I don't know, there is some defense, maybe, to rook keep it going, seven. seven. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a pawn, yeah. I mean, this is just, uh, I would have... So yeah, this was a nice thing I missed. But in second game, I was able to punish him. Um, in the third game, I mean. Yeah, the third game was uh, very pretty. I was a little bit surprised that after f5, did you consider g4 here, or no? uh, I considered it as a plan, not as an immediate. Um, I can tell you what was the reason I didn't. I opened the position because I thought if I keep it closed, um, I envisioned that he could go long castle somewhere maybe. Mm. Uh, but I, so I considered like bishop of two knight d1 knight e3, uh, but not g4 right away. I was really happy with ef6 to be honest in knight e5, but um, maybe g4 was very strong. I don't know. I was happy with this. A little bit. G4, I mean, if he takes knight g5 and this, maybe, but yeah, yeah. If I maybe if I saw that I can uh, go g4 directly without preparing it, hmm. I would have maybe done, but I was just also, but this is also good. Him. This is also yeah. a great position. Yeah, and then he played very maybe I should go here directly f5. I don't know, but I played rookie one. Yeah, before I, I'm not, yeah, he probably should take a b, I should take maybe with bishop or something. I'm of course better with this uh, controlling all the squares e5 mm. e4 right but uh, he's, he's like he doesn't care about his king in the center yeah it's very suspicious what he's doing because his e6 d5 pawns are soft and his king is not even castled yet and rook b2 yeah just fe yeah especially night before that's clearly mm. very dubious he probably missed that after bishop d1 i threatened queen c1 simply so he has to lose one more tempo ah. But this is a nice move, bishop d1. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very nice because actually it threatens the, the attack is there, but also queen c1 is coming. Yeah, and now I was thinking of some rook f6, but I couldn't make it work. And knight d7 is just very clean, I think. This is this is uh, brilliant. I, I thought you would choose between bishop g5 or knight d7, one of the two. Hmm. I was thinking only uh, bishop g5. Somehow I didn't see why, uh, because he would castle, I thought. So uh -huh. I was thinking about uh, bishop h6, knight f7, and rook f6, all these uh, for forcing ideas to stop him from castling. Like, I mean, some crazy moves like rook f6 and bishop h6, I don't know. But then I uh, couldn't, I wasn't sure if it wins by force. And I thought that, okay, it's a bit strange to take such big um, responsibility when you're probably winning just in a positional way. Knight d7 is just uh, easy, no sacrifices, should be good enough. Oops. Yeah, knight d3, now he missed bishop h5, rook a1, that my rook gets, you know, goes out from the other side takes if he took with the bishop also bishop h5 yeah. yeah yeah in the worst case it's the same thing with rook a1 so takes check rook a1 and yeah, yeah and then nice he allowed me this very beautiful check <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the prettiest checkmates that you might have yeah done. it's very nice so there's symmetric and then uh, in the next uh, game of course you played the knight of uh, very solid not e4 e5 <laughs> in a, in yeah, a... but I have to advertise my course some sometimes. Yes, I got not only chess base, uh, you know, <laughs> India Help Foundation, chess chess foundation. Wait, what is it? Chess help, help chess, help, help chess, chess foundation. Chess. Yeah, help chess. I need to advertise my own things as well sometimes. So then I. But this is prep till uh, I think you you were prep till. Uh... So, you know, yes. Sagar, when you are uh, a youngster, you should look at these things in the morning before the game and it will be a miracle. But uh, when you are so experienced like me, you you just seen it like three years ago or something. <laughs> but you so played it so fast. 
You remember? Yeah, yeah, I I um, remember because when I played against UAE in some Grand Prix many many years ago, I played uh, Rook B8 first, and uh, later on I th I thought like like what why did I like I mixed up I already knew the line back then actually <laughs> but that time I mixed up and then I thought like so stupid I tried to make the line work which I knew and instead of playing the normal move f5 which I would make I played Rook B8 so this moment stuck in my memory so I remembered it was a five and then I remembered Rook A4 Rook B8. And this is extremely uh, uh, remarkable idea to go rook b5 king h8 it is so remarkable that it's hard to forget i mean i saw it honestly last time when making my my course i think my course is now two years old probably hmm. i am i am not sure i have repeated this line ever since um not this particular subline probably for Crazy. sure uh, because f4 does this not work or it's bad oh he mixed up himself sorry he should have gone bishop d2 first uh, this is probably good, yeah. The line goes bishop d2, I guess. Rook ah, b8, bishop d2, rook b8. Mm -hmm. Achha, okay. So ah, if, yeah. if you went rook a4, uh, f4, bd2, how do you take advantage of this? e4 or something or what? Sometimes e4 is very strong. I don't oh, know. Is e4? Knight c5, it says. Yeah, e4. e4 also. No, I mean, no, normally e4, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, it seems I mixed up. Now I understand. Because, yeah, I, I remember that he attacks the b4 pawn and I go rook b8. But it was bishop ah. too, yeah. yeah. But it, but it transposed in the I, game. I guess he doesn't. He cannot use it. Yeah. Now it transposed to what I know. Rook b five. It's super difficult. Yeah. Rook exactly. H8. King h eight. I Same. thought. And and I I Same. actually checked your time and you took ten seconds. I was like, what? Oh, but I this like it. so. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I always have the urge, you know, to uh, reenact hands. Whenever you ask me this, I always have uh, the urge yeah, to do this. Oh my god, I am a genius. No, but like, of course, I mean, I know, I know his style. I know if I play King H8, I, he'll be, he'll not gonna take the pawn. If he takes it, he's gonna be scared shitless. <laughs> no, but I, I have the urge to uh, and say that I looked at it this morning, but I honestly didn't look. But it's just um, such a memorable, like such a remarkable idea to go Rook B5, force Bishop B4, and then play King H8. It is so weird, like it's just so computer stuff. That it's stuck in my memory and i remember this from uh, before my course i saw it and in my course, i guess when i was making my course i think i must be recommending this mm. and uh, yeah this is super strong like i don't know like even i think the point is that sometimes bishop b7 rook d5 there is bishop c4 pin so you go out of the pin also the reason you probably force bishop takes before is because you uh if he takes he wants to go rook takes rook. before you go rook d5. And then rook d5, I guess, mm -hmm. yeah? Right. Yeah, so he wants to go rook takes before. So you force him to capture with the bishop, and then rook on a4 is awkward. But it's something that I would never be able to find ever. Uh, but it's just uh, yeah, it's, it's just a computer sequence. Rook b5, bishop before king h8. This was my, yeah, it's my prep. Uh, and then there are some. Is there yeah. like any point of, like, what exactly? Like, can you not do something like knight f6? Yeah, I assume that he will go knight somewhere, and then maybe knight b6 here, yeah? Ah, knight here, b6. knight b6, correct. Ah, yeah. defending so the point, this. I think is that you want to play bishop b7, I think. You want to play bishop b7. And if I do and this now? I assume that there is something good, yeah? What is it? Knight b6. Yeah, and now I go knight takes b6. Rook takes b6. This move. Queen e8. Oh, rook a2. Yeah, rook a2. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see, I see. And with bishop on c8, king on h8, I would have rook b8 move. Really? Is, so is king h8 like a waiting move or what? No, it prepares bishop b7 also, and then knight b6, take, take rook takes d5. And there's no bishop c4 anymore. So like now if knight b6... So now I just take, take. Yeah, but during the game I was also in panic. I couldn't see it, and then I saw rook b6, bishop f5, queen e8. That's the idea. Ah, queen e8, and if this... Yeah, now rook has to go back to b8, I guess. Yeah, and the idea of king h8 is that I prepare bishop b7, and then after rook takes d5, there is no more bishop c4 pin on the king. So it's a useful waiting move. It's not just a waiting move. I guess, let's say, if it goes bishop e2, mm. is it what he played or not? Uh, no, he played uh, bishop takes d6. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Then he played bishop, uh, bishop e2. No, so bishop e2, of course. Uh, bishop b... I think bishop b7, right? That's right. The point. Uh, no, if... Uh, yeah, bishop b7 is just better for you. Yeah, player. and if now knight b6, now I take knight b6, ab, and I guess rook d5. And the point is that there is no more bishop c4 pin. Oh, deep, deep. Yeah, very nice. Yes, so, okay, this, this computer, computer moves, they have some point, but they are sometimes so deep that we'd never be able to find them. But I just knew it. 
So that was nice. And then uh, after that, uh, I hit you can always I, reconstruct it, like yeah, when you uh, know it. Uh, hopefully, in rapid is difficult sometimes, but I, I was hoping I will be able to reconstruct. And after bishop d6, I think taking and taking on b2 is the right way to go. Yeah, because I, I no yeah. longer remember it. This is correct. And, you know, knight c5 is coming, and after knight c4, rook b5, bishop b2 is very very logical. Also, bishop b7, good move. Yeah. Castles, takes. I was here very comfortable. I think yeah. for a must draw position, this is very comfortable. I don't know, like, if I have to win, it's not not so because position is like, he has, it's quite drawish if he wants. But uh, if he needs to play for a win, it's very difficult. And then I went for this attack. I don't know if it's good, but yeah. if, I thought that, you know, if you are must draw, winning, checkmating is also good. So. <laughs> yeah, it took me some time, rook c5. It took me some time because I, I didn't see, what is the move? Ah, the computer doesn't like, I didn't see rook d4 or what? Rook d1, queen d1, e4 it suggests. But I, I was thinking about it a lot. No, but no, this not. This I didn't like queen d6. Takes, I think I didn't like queen d6, takes. although. And now rook like I just f6 didn't want six somehow. Rook f6. Hmm. Okay. Very it's weird, like, no? Like, yeah, exactly. Seven. It looks like I'm losing control. I didn't like but now no, I considered it right away e4 instead of uh, takes. Uh, right away e4, the reason I didn't play it is that uh, I thought he will then take on d5. Um, bishop take, knight b6. It should be still good, but. It's very good, yeah. Take, yeah. Take an e also, ninety five probably crushes. Ninety five is crushing. Wait, can you go back after e four? Why didn't I play e four also? It might be. I can tell you the logic. I can tell you the logic exactly. My logic was I wanted to keep diagonal open so that a six never hangs. This was my logic. Ah, you uh, so mean I thought this, like rook c five, knight b six. I expected always knight b six, and then I wanted after knight b six. Oh, this is blunder, yeah. Knight b six. I wanted to just go like knight of six. And the a6 never hangs because of the bishop still being open. That was my logic. I, I was what I was worried about is that I will go e4, which is feels like right move. Mm. And then he will snatch my a6 pawn and I will look for some kind of mate, which is not there. And then he will go back to f1 and promote the a pawn. So I wanted to be like extra safe with this rook c5. But after rook c5, he has something, yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's a bit artificial. It's very I mean, difficult to find that move, I believe. What is it? Rook c3 or rook d3. And if rook c Rook c4, rook d7. Seven. But is that a problem? Bishop d7? Bishop c4. And bishop c6, let's say. Yeah, bishop f1. I think equal now. I mean, your advantage is gone some. Okay, yeah, no, my advantage maybe, yeah. But the first but you are, you are, uh, the draw is fine, so you are okay. Draw is fine, but also I just didn't see rook d 3 No, I thought rook c5 is very good for me. And if not rook d 3 I'm good, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so that was practically not such a bad move. Yeah, and now he just blundered rook c4. I was very lucky. I guess he might have rook g3 as a counter trap or something, but yeah, but I any queen any move basically. Exactly. Yeah, for a second I thought maybe he has come to trap with rook g3, but I saw any queen move. Right. So I was very lucky. Amazing. That was a fantastic uh, play by you. Yeah, I was very happy because I was never, you know, I uh, I very rarely qualify to, to something. Exactly. And, and no, not qualify. Of course, you no, really. top eight of champions chess tour. You've been like doing it through okay. all. The that is true. That is true, but I mean, in a sense, like, like I World Cup, I get invited, you know, like uh, usually I get some kind of wild card somewhere <laughs> because I'm, you know, respected grandpa. I'm getting wild cards usually. <laughs> so uh, and and now I played um, qualifier for Fisher random mm -hmm. and qualifier for this, and I had this nightmare that you know it would be kind of funny if Abdus Satorov he was he was everywhere in the that he would kick me out from all the events <laughs> from the World Cup. Then from Fisher, then from this. Like imagine, yeah. Suddenly you have one kid who kicks you out of everything. Fisher but, uh, happened already. Uh, how? What? Yeah, yeah. I, I played. Uh, I reached the final, but then I lost a very, very exciting match to Nudirbek. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a very interesting games with him. Always up and down. I beaten him very nicely in Town Memorial, but uh, the World Cup was tough. And uh, yeah, now again, Fisher was was tough. But here I was. Uh, it was quite uh, remarkable that he lost against uh, Pongratov round before, so I didn't get to meet yeah. him. Exactly. And but now, was very happy to now yeah. it's like a round robin or it's still knockout only, right? No, it's an eight player knockout, but it's in person. I, is it like uh, how you do in uh, Miami or will it be on the board? Oh, I, good question. I suspect it's like on the screen, maybe still oh. like in Miami. Okay. So, so you will play against? Uh, I think in my bracket, I think I played the winner of Nepo against who is Nepo playing? Nepo is the place. Raja or not? 
Ah, Nepo Raja. Maybe. I, I'm playing the basically Nepo would be the strongest player I could face, the highest rated player I could face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be very exciting because in Canada. So if you go there and you play the match, it will be in one day the entire match or I no, no, I don't think I mean I guess one match. I'm also wondering what uh, happens to people who lose the first match. Do they like do yeah, you just fly yeah. all the way, you lose, and you fly back? Because it's a long flight. <laughs> I hope at least you fly a good plane. <laughs> yeah, I have to true. check the regulation. I was just very happy that I could qualify and then I'll see. Uh, but it's the prizes of this tournament that are so good. And uh, I think the prizes are... It's, this, is, this looks like an online World Cup. It is basically like online Rapid World Championship, pretty much. Right. But um, it looks like an online World Cup in this format. Uh, but the prizes are even higher, I think. Yeah, I think they're higher, which is really unbelievable. It's I mean, huge. this is one million. Yeah, yeah. USD. they're really setting a new standard for the online events. Exactly, that is like uh, almost half the prize fund of the world championship. Yeah, yeah, and this is also why um, at some point we have to switch the thinking from this uh, online cheating over the board cheating. I think we have to switch it to th to realize that okay, this cheating is just not good anywhere because it's very serious. Yeah, this they is what I was saying, like, uh, I was trying to make an analogy, like, if you do some kind of a crime in one country, and then you go and fly to another country, you are not, you are not in trouble there. Yeah, some of the rules there are like, yeah, okay, you yeah. can stay, but then uh, if the country where you committed the crime can try and collaborate with that other country and remove you, but yeah, there is no law, Interpol. yeah, something like that. So... It's something on that lines, but I guess sooner or later being the same person would mean that you will be in trouble in over the board chess as well, if you do it in online. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think this is where it's going. It's clear that this is where it's going. It's, um, um, and there is logic to that. There's, there's logic to that. And of course, there has to be a very clear the rules have to be very clearly defined. And we have to, uh, we, I mean, as chess community, we have to educate young players. That they know you know mm -hmm. uh how, like because chess of course my, many people play it casually i know some people um friends my chess classmates you know and stuff like they were like okay can you beat you know uh, can you beat, beat this phone can you beat this engine they asked me yeah so this okay this i can do but sometimes uh, some would ask like um, i have a friend can you beat him on my behalf yeah for fun mm -hmm. but, you know in theory if you do that on chess.com they could ban that guy you know Correct. so there is a border somewhere between i mean there is no border actually like this is already it gets you banned on chess.com so um of course as casual players they don't really understand like complete uh, people like you know from like i don't know from normal world not just world but uh, we have to educate professional potentially professional players the youngsters that uh, they they know that you know there are a lot of people like uh, you me and many others who take just way too seriously and for us this is not fun you know this stuff yeah uh, yeah we take it very seriously. It's what we do. It's, uh, you know, it's our life. It's our uh, job. And um, if uh, and it's a great sport also, you know, that has a big following. And if we don't take it seriously, then the integrity of it will be undermined. We have to tell that message to youngsters. So, uh, of course, yeah, youngsters always also in normal crime. They get a, they can afford to do more things and then um, get second chances. It's understandable. So I understand that. Uh, I understand that. But uh, in chess, the young players, you know, I mean, Gukesh is 16, yeah? Speaking of young, he's like already going, <laughs> he's already going to beat the, all the grandpas. I mean, young, yes, but already top player. So you yeah. already play top level. Uh, so, yes, it, it kind of people mature early in chess. And we have to tell them also, I brought up Gukesh, of course, because of the, he's, because he's so high rated and he's so young. That's why he's like the youngest guy in the top. Uh, he's just 16. Yeah. So, yeah, we have to kind of try to manage that uh, everybody understands that, okay, you know, it's serious and it's better not to do it, um, especially if you are promising and you have career ahead. So, yeah, absolutely. Did, were you able to like spend time and read the 72 page document? <laughs> <laughs> I had to prepare for Pongrat. But uh, I got the, uh, you know, I already stopped reading recently. It's not a necessary skill because if you, if follow you can the hear Kamura, <laughs> If you can hear why to read. Yeah, if you follow Hikaru Nakamura, he reads it for you. So that's nice. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's uh, I understood the gist of it pretty much. And it seems that so far uh, they have very conclusive proof that he, uh, that, that Hans, but it's also not just about uh, Hans, it's more in general as well, uh, in general as well, like uh, how to approach the situation. And uh, yeah, it, it seems that there is some proof that online he has been doing uh, 
so a lot of cheating but yeah, uh, more than all the is, is still not clear yeah yeah and uh, today like as we are talking right now he he's actually playing at the us championship right well, now. yeah no this is a, a very interesting situation and he sh as long as he, there is no proof that he has cheated over the board he is by current rules fully allowed to do that hmm. but um it seems that uh, uh, magnus uh, and yeah some public demand is that maybe it's not maybe uh, yeah maybe it's not clear how to you know maybe we should approach it differently because now a lot of public a lot of publicity by chess.com also they you know they were forced to change the way they tackle it so big stuff there happening but i think uh, at the end of the day i think it's important that you know we'll uh, uh, through education and so on we'll uh, protect integrity of our of the, of the sport so that's good yeah i think that's an important point that you made there by the way before we end this uh, this is just a normal position but i want to show you with its game today that he's playing did you did you get a chance to look at it i, I don't start it was my game against navara and he's improved on it with black he played the knight to d7 not to d5 i beat navara here ah you with black with white i played this against navara in uh, last champions tour i played this e5 he went knight d5 well, very logical but mistake knight d7 is improvement i think we did was prepared for this okay but look at this now okay knight g5 okay knight g6 h4 uh oh, only move yeah for black now bishop e7 yeah, yeah. bishop e7 rook h3 c5 rook g3 takes h5 and now knight f3 what would you play here as black like if you were black in this position i mean i, I there's no great move as such but mm -hmm. still because it's like knight f3 and suddenly like you think the attack is going back but queen e4 coming in queen g4 bishop h6 mm -hmm. it looks dangerous no well, I mean, what humans usually do in such a situation, they do some panicky f5 move. Hmm. This is what humans very often do. Because you want to, yeah, you're afraid of queen e4, queen g4 long term, you want to do some f5. I don't know if it's good here. It's sometimes very bad, sometimes it's very good. Yeah, but here f5... Okay, my voice is very loud, it seems. Uh, f... oh, bishop h6 is also there, yeah, maybe. Yeah, f5, bishop h6 seems very yeah. strong. Yeah. The king h8 first, maybe. King, maybe knight e d4 but here he played d3 mm -hmm. it he could be still pre in prep i mean i uh, should revise my notes it could be in, the, in in my notes also i don't really do this with black so i i did it twice 26 minutes already used so maybe not yeah um, yeah maybe not i think he might have not been so deep in rook g3 knight f3 back thing mm. there are many things you know for example there is knight x h7 move instead of um yes yes uh, very uh, very very long line here, very dangerous when but instead of rook h3 but i thought knight, knight at 7 c5 like yeah but okay how you say you say like c5 like you know like no, it's normal no, the I mean, thing is i mean king at 7 h5 is just lost right so you have no option yeah and bishop h4 is the most logical move i think really i mean i thought well, knight on d5 with knight on d5 is what my game with navara bishop h4 was played ah. but here you have c5 i mean it's i find it not normal this line h5 i think i guess you're what yeah h5 uh, and now, oh, now maybe this is not normal, correct? And sure. Well, I mean, the whole line is not normal. Uh, just this whole uh, black has to know it. But he did it, and so this rookie three, maybe he didn't. Yeah, a well, very fascinating game. I think against Mikhailovsky, he's happy to get such cage uh, cage fight mm. because uh, he is uh, lower rated and he wants to win on counter attack. So I like this for him. But actually, uh, Mikhailovsky played it very uh, nicely because he went bishop at six here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then queen d3, knight c5, queen e3, queen d3, and knight d4. So I don't think like black white risks anything now. But you know, honestly speaking, okay, I see the bar, but I wouldn't uh, think optically. I would think that black is perfectly fine. Yeah, like, exactly. Perfectly. I mean, with it, I would even take black. I mean, I because I ah, you take my it. instinct would be that white e5 pawn a little bit. I mean, I don't know, it could be a, usually when you don't uh, succeed with attack, it becomes a weakness. Maybe here not because of f4, but I don't know, rook ac8, knight a4 somewhere. Like, I I don't think, I'm not worried for Vidit. I think he'll never lose this, but maybe I don't understand this position. I mean, I see I don't because bar is for white. 
I would be thinking that Black did great. Defend from attack, will now trade queens and try to activate his pieces and take over in the end game. Have good bishop. Of course, this six, six, six square annoys me a little bit, but it doesn't seem like a big deal. I go to KC, defend it, and um, yeah. yeah, Black is a bit passive, but in the end game, it's not. A, yeah, I don't understand this honestly. I would be really surprised. I think if it was my own game during the game, I would. If I play a lower rated player, I would think I'm gonna play it for a win this end game. Hmm. But I'm. I guess yeah, it's not so simple. Just. So maybe with it, maybe push here, but most likely draw. Sagar, I think there is emergency today on my house because um, my son, he is struggling with his Lego. He needed me to help. Oh, Lego. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. Uh, right? so. <laughs> I thought suddenly something. Yeah, but of course, it's very important, but uh, everything's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm joking. Okay, Sagar. <laughs> okay, take care, Anish. Thanks very much for inviting. Enjoy the stream, guys. See you soon. Bye. Okay, that was Anish Giri there, and uh, he was played a great match against Pavel Ponkrato and managed to uh, win uh, and move to the top eight of the Global Chess Championship. At some point, I was very uh, afraid when Anish said, oh my God, there's emergency in my house. And I was like, oh my God, what happened? Uh, and then, uh, okay, Lego sounded uh, pretty <laughs> good at that point. Okay, so I think um, this is what has happened. And as we discussed, this was the position. And we felt that Vidit cannot lose this. But also, it's very, going to be very difficult for him to win this against uh, Mikhailovsky. Let's hope uh, that... Uh, it'll be a nice game. Also, Hari Krishna, meantime, seems to have a very interesting position against uh, Rodstein, Maxim Rodstein. So, uh, let's uh, see what happens. Because I think after Queen C7, Hari did Knight F3, Queen C5, Bishop C3, and A6, Knight D4. This is the... position okay so i think guys uh this means that we this game will go on late in the night they started like five hours late than normal um and we will see tomorrow morning what happens meanwhile um US Championship is on. This is the position of Neiman versus Christopher Yu. This will also be a game that a lot of people will watch and would like to keep an eye on. Uh, so, guys, I'll take your leave. And um, what is Lego? Nikhil says. N Nikhil, you have to Google it. Today's game of ECC is probably Emre Khan versus Maksud Lu. Okay, very nice. PRT, I would always uh, check out your suggestions. Let's see what happened there. Before we end it, Maksud Lu. Oh, Maksud Lu lost. E4, Knight F6, C4, E6, G3, D5, BG2 takes. Castle, Knight C6, A4. Okay. Rook p8, 5, p5 takes, Chef, rook 3, 6, 95, mm -hmm. 97, check, okay, king f8 forced, because if you take knight c6 is a fork, so, Chef g2 pack, 95, pd2, queen c7, e4, b5, Oh, I think e5 will trap the bishop, so that's why he sat. Okay, nice. And with such a king, black is in trouble. Yeah, I think white seems to have a very pleasant. Oh, bishop a5. I didn't see that coming. Oh my god. Because if you take here, then knight c4 and queen d3 would be weak. amazing. This is a very nice move. I don't know if it was the only move. Takes, knight c4. Queen takes. What's the move now? Rook c1, huh? Because if 
So rook one second. Rook c1, knight c1, queen d8 is made. If queen c1, queen d3, and again queen d8, rook. Okay. No, he was rook a3. Is rook c1 a blunder or? Oh, it's a mistake because of queen b5. No, oh, come on, rook a3 is fantastic move. Very tough to find. Knight d5 takes six. Nice. If knight takes, then mate. So queen b5 check um, attacks the rook. Nice. If you take check here. Queen b7 takes and of course now rook d5. Oh nice, nice. Great game. Great suggestion. Great suggestion, PRT. Beautiful game. Beautiful game. This is such a nice game. No, guys? Rook is sort of trapped here. So great game by uh, Emre. I think it's not Khan. You have to pronounce it as Chan. Maybe the Turkish name. For Mastha Muste. And I, I really like this move. Uh, first knight e c4. Okay, this is kind of logical because e5 traps the bishop. But what was really amazing was this sequence of bishop a5. Findable. But knight c4 and rook a3. This was not easy. This is well done. This is very I Maybe for one of the best games of Emre. Okay, guys, see you all. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow I have to go to um, Pragnananda's Simul in uh, Mumbai at Worli. And uh, it's at 3 o'clock. I think I'll shoot things and then put it up later. Uh, not, not going to uh, be live, but we'll do it later. And uh, yeah, no, I think uh, over the board games, minus we maybe we don't think that these such games are. Uh, I mean, it's easy to think about cheating and all, but I don't think OTB chess is so easy. Okay, see you all, and bye bye. Take care. And see you tomorrow.